The Manchester Storm need to play the game of their lives tonight if they're to stay in the playoffs. The treble champions air are a game up in the series, a win here at the 9X will put them in the final and a step away from achieving the Grand Slam. The question is, have Manchester got what it takes to stop air from going for the clean sweep? Game two of the playoff semi-final between the Manchester Storm and the Air Scottish Eagles from the 9X Arena. It's a best of three series, remember, the Eagles lead 1-0. Victory for them tonight will secure them a place in the finals here next week. Well, both semi-finals are taking place this evening. Cardiff travelled to Sheffield after their 5-4 victory in overtime on Wednesday at the Ice House. We'll show you the best of that game a little later in the show. And we'll be keeping you up to date with how Game 2 progresses from Sheffield. Before we face off here at the 9X, though, let's have a look at how Air got just the start they needed at the Centrum with victory over Manchester on Wednesday. Manchester had a good start against the league champs. Brad Rubichuk making it 2-1. His shot from the top of the circle just squeezing under Dobson. Air tied it up in the second and Kerry Piet gave the Eagles the lead as he broke through the storm D and pulled a great move on Shervin. Jamie Steer then collected the eventual game-winning goal as he took advantage of a neutralized turnover. He then turned Cooper inside out to shoot home and make it 4-2. With just under 10 minutes to go, Mike Morin collected the puck in the corner and stepped into the slot to slide the puck under Dobson. But the league champs added an insurance marker with Dennis Purdy grabbing the puck in front of Shervin. Air take the best of three opener, 5-3. Welcome to the 9X. We've had the pre-match entertainment here, and the atmosphere really is building. Joining me for this one, Jim Furichuk of the Bracknell Bees. Jim, this is a really hard game to call, isn't it? So tight. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, Manchester clearly has their backs against the wall, but I think it's games like this, these high-pressure situations that bring out the best in players, and I believe Manchester has the players in their lineup that could come out and win this game tonight, and they definitely have to. You say bring out the best, and we've seen already the best of three series does seem to propel the level of play, doesn't it, to something uh, quite exceptional? Yeah. It does it changes the focus of things because you really have to take it one game at a time you know it's not like a two game total point series where you know you've got both games to work with whereas here you've got three separate games and you've really got a king on, on doing your job and making sure you come up with the win Manchester a little bit precarious though they had a 16 game winning run they've lost their last three what's Kurt gonna do very briefly to turn things around well I think really the the big thing now is to get back believing in themselves and be very positive. I think they do have a great lineup. They've got a lot of skill and they've, they've beat air before and that's the thing is to think back to the positive times where they did have success against them and, and come out with a, with a positive frame of mind. They know it's do or die though, don't they? And it's almost face-off time here at the 9X. So let's join our commentary team, Bob Carroll and Tony Millard. Whilst many people believe it's an advantage to be at home, it's actually been fairly even overall when these clubs have met. In 19 clashes over the last couple of years, both have won eight. But with air, well, three trophies already in their possession. They won just once in nine visits here, that in the Express Cup back in December. But they are confident they've suffered just one defeat in their last nine games. Manchester Storm, well, they're the home team, and they start tonight with Grant Sherman in goal. On defence is Chris Miller and Kevin Hoffman. They're starting forwards are Mike Morin, Craig Woodcock and Brad Rubichuk. For air, it's Rob Dobson in goal. On defence, Alan Shuler and Ron Camus. Up front, it's Dennis Purdy, Sean Barham and Matt Hoffman. Tonight's referee, one of the league's more experienced officials, he's Simon Kirkham, who comes from Leicester. Bob Crawl alongside me, Nervin's jangling here for both teams, but Manchester with a few injuries are going to be up against it. Yeah, they're going to have a tough time tonight, Tony. Air playing at full strength, with the exception of Jeff Hode. And, you know, they've got those four lines, and they seem to work very, very well together. That's been a key for them all season long. Matches to the home team in the lighter strip, defending the goal to our left. Puck dumped into the corner by Mike Morin. Rob Dobson it is who knocks it back, the goaltender. 
Good interception though, and Manchester battling here, 41 for them is Brad Rubichuk. Here in the darker strip, defend the goal to our left, already of course with those three trophies under their belt. But this is air in possession house, 16 is Sean Barham. Mistake at the back, but uh, good cover here from Chris Miller. This is Ryan Camus. Switching play, but again a good interception there from the Manchester defence. This is Sean Barham for Manchester for uh, Air knocking it into the corner. Rick Brabant is number 93 for Manchester Storm. They clear their defensive zone. Knocked back in by Ryan Camus, and again Brabant has to work hard. Dumped around the boards, knocked down by Grant Sherman, the Manchester Storm goaltender. This is Hilton Ruggles. Tidy pass into the neutral zone. This is Middlestat dumps it into the corner. Chases on. But Bob, it's going to be uh, tough here, and they're being forced back early on, Manchester. You know, a, a bit of a funny start, I feel, to this game, Tony. I, I felt that both teams, most certainly the Air Scottish Eagles, would come out, play a little bit more of a physical-type game, but that hasn't happened so far this evening. But look for that to continue. Air the team that don't have any injuries. They've got lots in the lineup. They've got to try and slow the Manchester Storm down. Well, not a single stoppage so far. Both teams already having changed their lines. In fact, Manchester have changed them twice. Knocked into the attacking zone by Vince Bowe. This is Craig Woodcock for Manchester, number nine. Switches play here. And playing nearly two minutes without a stoppage. The first stoppage, and we can go down rinkside to our rinkside reporter for the latest news from Nick Rothwell. Yeah, guys, the most noticeable thing down here is the depth on each bench. And like you said, Bob, Air, they're more or less at full strength. They're only out of code, but the Manchester bench is so thin. They've only got about eight forwards, so that means what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to double shift Morrison and Brabant at center ice, and every once in a while, we're going to drop in Woodcroft. But don't count these guys out. This is playoff hockey. It's like backing up an injured fox into the corner. It's not going to roll over and let you tickle its belly. Manchester are going to fight tooth and nail for this. Well, I agree with that. You know, you get the players in a game once it gets heated up. And as we all say, Nick, Tony, hey, listen, you get in there, you get at it, you do the job you possibly have to do. I've got a feeling it's going to be closer than most people think. This is Parko pushing forward for air with the shot, just off target. One of the examples out there, Craig Woodcock in the centre, but a chance of a shot there going in from Scott Young, storming forward just off target for the Scottish Eagles. This is Jablonski on the break. Woodcock in support, Morrison on this side gets possession. Chance here for Manchester Storm with a great effort. And the goaltender, Rob Dobson, has been so hot all season. Just stayed his ground and stopped that stone dead. Most often when you've got a defenseman that stands his ground up, you get smart guys like Davey Morrison and they lead to Woodcock, who slips in behind him there. But if you're standing up as a defenseman, gang, you've got to make sure that you have those guys covered. Guys coming back and make sure you pick those men up. Well, certainly Manchester Storm taking best advantage of their manpower and uh, Craig Woodcroft there having a spell there centering with Morrison on the right wing. But now this is Manchester pushing forward again. Dobson has to be tough. Oh, that was desperately closed with Rubichuk coming in. And he almost got a touch on the puck to deflect it into the net. Well, I'm sure the motto for the Storm is is you've got to drive to the net with that puck and anything can happen from there. What it almost did then is Rob Dobson dives on the puck. And Manchester Storm may be lacking in numbers, but they're not lacking in effort here tonight. Well, the Storm always come out strong. I mean, if you look at them as terms of a first-period team, boy, they always do the business. But Dobson in the air nets, he's been so strong all season long. And once again, look at this. He comes up with a big save. Hey, how important about this? No rebound, fellas. No rebound. That's the key. Well, there's that man, Rob Dobson. He's the leading goaltender in the league this season. 92% save average. He's conceded 114 goals, but he's had a fair few shots piled in at him. Puck now cleared into the neutral zone. This is Troy Newmeyer for Manchester Storm, number 44. Woodcroft is to his left, and Woodcroft will collect those puck here. Steps inside. Good into passing there, and Woodcroft still goes. Got support from Rubichuk as the trailer. Batted down from just below shoulder height. Officials let that go on. Stephen Cooper is taken into the boards. Chance here the break here. Warren is back to cover. Good back checking. Cooper goes over with a big hit for Manchester Storm. And Barham is taken down. For air. And now Manchester will dump this into the corner, giving them the opportunity to change their entire line. 
This is Ryan Camus for air. Not popping here in this ring, of course. This is Rick Brabant. Chance here at the edge of the crease, but great save there. <laughs> Two people playing a goal there, and in the end, Dobson diving in there. And, uh, well, two hands are better than one, I suppose. Well, a transition in neutralized territory, which is picked up. Turnover by Rick Brabant, and it's all downhill here. I'll tell you, what a save there by Alan Schuler in front to make Rob Dobson's job in the net that much similar. But Rick Brabant, what a transition he's made since coming over to Manchester, and boy, has he done a terrific job. Every time we've seen this guy this year, I'll tell you, he's come up trumps. What a game he's played. Error being pushed back. More on Rick Brabant in a moment, who this week's been selected for the Great Britain squad, of course, in the uh, World uh, Championships Group B. This is Rick Brabant. Started the season with youth as a coach, of course. This is Mark Wolf for Air in possession inside his own zone. This is Joey Middlestack. Spreads play. Good work here. Pushing forward for the Scottish Eagles, Mark Montanari. Shot from Wolf. Fires to connect. This is Hoffman for Manchester Storm. And we've got two Hoffmans playing today. Matt Hoffman for Air. Kevin Hoffman for Manchester. This Rick Brabant with the shot. Another save by... Rob Dobson has been put under some pressure early on here. Well, one of the things about playing in air just on Wednesday night is the Manchester players, I think they felt that perhaps Rob Dobson maybe didn't have the best game of the season and he was flinching a little bit. But coming into this game, very important that he stays hot if air is going to be successful in the arena. First icing call of the night gives us a chance to look at the uh, lineups here tonight. Starting with Manchester Storm. We know that they're pretty short-handed here. No, Mikael Vicklander, of course, Chris Miller is the top-scoring defenseman at the moment. Uh, Miller has banged in 18 goals. Dave Morrison, of course, their captain. Jeff Tomlinson dressing, but not icing much tonight. And Stefan Katola in the same position. Stefan Katola so impressive they're missing him. But Rick Brabant is there, of course. This is Dale Jago for Manchester with a shot on the edge of the crease there. And Dobson is so alert. The goaltender, the other end, Grant Sherman, has had little to worry him. But certainly at the air end of the rink, well... Manchester trying to make hay. So Scott Young scored. Good interception by Newmeyer. Newmeyer again taken into the corner. This is Dale Jago for Manchester. Dave Morrison switches play. Good into passing between Morrison and Craig Woodcock. Morrison with a shot and Dobson again has to be alert. Well, here, almost at full strength here tonight. Rob Dobson, that impressive goaltender. Scott Young, of course, such a prolific scoring defenseman. The captain, Angela Catanara, number three. Mark Wolf and Jamie Skier bang them in. Sean Barham is pretty impressive. And Sam Grillo with 10 power play goals among his 30 this season. Face off is deep in that air defensive zone. Rick Brabant there trying to win the draw for Manchester, almost succeeding. This is Sean Barham, though. Against his old club, of course, Sean Barham played for Manchester last season. Dave Morrison robbed. Play switch there. I hopped. Chance here and almost uh, worrying for the first time, Grant Sherman. This is Jablonski for Manchester. Good four checking by air. Still keeping that puck in. Good work by Matt Hoffman. This is Scott Young for air. Again, Manchester calm at the back. Chris Miller touched on Brad Rubichuk just inside his own red line, but uh, because it was inside his own red line, that'll produce the icing ball. Well, Kirk Klein and Deutsch for the Manchester Storm. He's got a little bit of pressure on him. He knows that he's got to keep his team alive in this playoff series. And most certainly, he's in his own home building. He's got a lot of fans supporting him, which will certainly help him. Jim Lynch, on the other hand, while he's on the road, he knows he breathes more fresh air if he loses tonight, but I'm certain that he'd like to finish this off because he wants to concentrate on that final next week if he can get his team there. Manchester pinned back, but they will clear this puck right up the ice, and there'll be another face-off deep in that Manchester defensive zone. Well, Rob Dobson there already had six shots to save. He's kept them all out, and Air has so far not managed a shot on Grant Sherman at the other end. There's Grant Sherman. Relatively peaceful night for him so far. The thing is, as you know, the quality of shots, Tony, so far in this game, you know, looking at what Manchester's had on Dobson in the air nets, boy, they've had some good opportunities, and he's come up well. 
This is Sam Grillo. If anybody can score goals, he can. Ryan Famu knocks it in. First shot on target. Grant Sherman kicks it away competently. Grillo is 27 for air, taken into the boards by Dale Jago. Ray Woodcroft working hard and battling there with Mark Montanari of air. Another shot, and perhaps the pattern of play will change now. Two shots in quick succession on that man, Grant Sherman. You know, we speak about a 2-1. There's two four-checkers here in the Manchester zone by the Air Scottish Eagles, and of course that puck is won by air. It comes out to the shooters who's in the slot area. Now that's just good old hockey for Sherman here to make that big save on. But you gotta have that guy high if the puck pops loose. You got a man coming back as a back checker. Well, that's that showing you that Grant Sherman's goals against average slightly higher against uh, air than they are against uh, other teams. But uh, playing his part and there, saving his first shots, uh, had to wait six minutes. Just over six minutes in the game for air to get their first shot on goal. And now the battle is joined in the air defensive zone. This is Vince Bow. Good four checking by Manchester this time. Still pushing their opponents back here. And this is Stephen Cooper with the shot. And Grant, and somehow Rob Dotson gets down and grabs that under some pressure with his left hand almost from behind the line. Well, I don't like those errant pucks when they come across into middle ice, especially in the offensive zone. But again, the storm. Get all kinds of opportunity. The puck does not bounce the right way, however. Look at that. One crack, two cracks. Hilton Ruggles, a terrific goal scorer. Just can't get the puck on it. Dobson once again gets that big mitt down. Face off then deep in that air zone. Hardly any respite for that man, Rob Dobson. Dave Morrison wins it. Acting the center man now. Shot goes in, takes a deflection there. This time off, uh, Davidson Pierre away to safety, avoiding his goaltender, Rob Dobson. John Parker waxing clear, but only where Newmeyer can knock it in. Rebound comes back to Newmeyer again, kicked away by Rob Dobson. Good crop. This is Dave Morrison, number 10 for Manchester, kicking around the boards under pressure from Scott Young. Jablonski is number 51. Great interception there, but still manages to put forward. Shot goes in from Newmeyer, just off target. Jablonski chases into the corner, eased around by Woodcroft. Still the pressure is on, but now Air can get the break here. This is David St. Pierre. Step inside here, great work here from Jamie Steer. And that, just about the closest Air have come yet, great stick handling. Well, Jamie Steer, he's the guy with a lot of good moves, and he certainly played one in the most recent game. The last one up in air between these two sides. You've got to take the body on this fella. But it's a prolific three-on-three. Three. Everyone's got even numbers here until that happens. And, of course, that allows Steer to go in and get that opportunity on goal. Certainly got a very good record against Manchester this season as Jamie Steer. Grant Sherman did very well on the angle there. Bobby came out well beyond his uh, little circle there. Shot goes in from Kumu, and again, it's swell, it's down in behind the goaltender. It went in from Ron Kumu, and that counts as Ron Kumu's seventh goal of the season, unless he got a deflection on the way, and Grant Sherman caught wanting as Air take the lead. It's Manchester nil, Air one. Well, it's one of these shots that's got plenty on it, but it's got a deflection, and I think that's Biet in front of the net there that's had the last tap on it to put it... They've given it to Ryan Kumu, but I'm not so sure that Kerry Biet didn't touch that before it in, in behind Grant Sherman. But you can see the deflection as it happens, and it just slips between the old wickets there of the goalkeeper. And that puts Air up 1-0. Well, they'll need 1-0, and remember, if it stays like this, or Air stay in front, and they go through to the final by two, get two straight games in this best of three semi-final series. Air will now start to build confidently. They're moving forward here with a purpose. Mike Morin. Help on the far side. Storming forward and they've looked for the penalty. No penalty given yet. We haven't had a penalty in this game. And the Manchester fans don't like that call. Now the break is on here for Matt Hoffman. Pushing Rubachuk dumps it into the corner. 
Joey Middlestack round behind his own net for air as both teams change on the fly. This is Sean Barham. Flicks it forward. Good chase going in there from Hoffman. Manchester looking for the break now, clearing it into the defensive zone. Eric Flinton will chase it into the corner. Well-timed skate forward over that blue line. And Flinton in turn taking hard into the balls this time by Dennis Purdy. The side, the break on for air. Good work again by Purdy. And up against the boards, looking for the place off that. Barham working hard. Chance of shot as in from Vince Bow there, and Bow gets a second bite of the cherry. This is Sean Barham for air. On the blue line, held in well by Joey Middlestad. Held up against the boards, and that will give a face off. And we've got uh, somebody, I think, hurt there in the corner. Well, Jim Lynch has certainly got to be happy with a start in this game. His team up one nothing now. We'll maybe get a chance to have another look at this goal just to see whether or not, in fact, Viet in front of the net actually deflects this puck in. I say that touches his skate, takes a different angle, and it slips under the pads of Grant Sherman, who's down. Well, I think that replay quite clearly shows it going off the left skate of Carry Viet. Bob, as you called it at the time, shot going in from Ron Camus on the blue line from a narrow angle. Carry Viet skate deflecting it into the net. Now you know the importance of making sure that that puck is on the ice, on a shot from the point, because that's the reason why these guys do it. So it can deflect and it bounces around there and gives the misgivings to the goalkeeper. Mark Wolf switches play. This is Montanari for air getting forward on the edge of the crease. Great defensive cover by Stephen Cooper. He's the pressure on uh, Grant Sherman. This is Dave Morrison. Brabant skating in front of him. It's going to be chased into the corner by Jablonski. Still manages to retain possession. Cooper knocks it into the corner again. Two number tens collide. Montanari and Dave Morrison, but uh, Montanari comes out on top with the break. Offside call down in front of us, and uh, up on high is Jim Fairchuck, the Bracknell Bees coach. Jim, a tight game so far, but Air getting the first goal, which could be vital. Yeah, it was actually a very lucky bounce for them, and uh, that's the idea of a face-off, is just try to get it back to the point man and then get the puck to the net with boards getting there, and they got a lucky bounce, and uh, right now I think it hurt Manchester, uh, you know, psychologically, because they did have a lot of pressure on air. How do you think the team strength, or lack of team strength, is going to affect Manchester? Uh, come playoff time, you know, emotions are high, it'll carry you through, even, you know, you might feel a little bit of fatigue, but uh, you know what's on the line here, guys will fight through that and go for it. Well, there are plenty of empty gaps on the Manchester bench, as Jim was saying, the lack of strength and uh, a little bit of a problem with the ice just in front of the bench. It's all the players a welcome breather. And our linesman, Gareth Hubbard, is the man charged with the job of sorting things out down there. Gareth Hubbard comes from Cardiff. He'll drive up this morning. Well, it's the responsibility of these linesmen, Tony. Anytime you have a hole or some sort of debris on the ice, their job is to make sure that they go and pick it up, clean things up so it doesn't cause an obstruction for the players out there. This is Dale Jago. Hoffman pushes it forward. Number five here for... because it's Alan Shula. Shula takes his eye off the puck when it counts. This is Ron Camus who's been credited with the goal. John Parko is number seven as the puck disappears out over the boards and that'll produce a face off almost on the red line. Well, there's a late addition to the Air Scottish Eagles this, this season, I should say, John Parko. And he played in the DEL before coming here, but I believe his team folded, but he's been an inspiration boy. He's really helped. He's a tremendous skater, this fella. And he's certainly been in on some very big goals for the Air Scottish Eagles into the stretch and into the playoffs. Face off then, right on that red line. David Sinclair wins the draw for the Scottish Eagles. Ron Camus will dump it into the corner. Dumped in from his own side of the red line. Could have brought an icing call and it hasn't. It's back in the neutral zone before it's locked in again. And uh, painful off the skates of Dale Jago. His ankle. This is Jago though, didn't feel the pain. Dave Morrison spreads play well here and a chance on the far side. Great shot just off target this time. Brad Rubichuk coming very close. Oh, 
Icing Paul will take the action back down to the Air Scottish Eagles defensive zone and the early Manchester pressure Air survived and they've got the goal that counts and now it's Manchester that are going to come back they do you know and uh, but the Manchester Storm they're in their own building and I mean you know that's going to be so important for them as this game progresses but I have to say Tony you get a hot goaltender I spoke to Davey Morrison during the week and you know he said listen Manchester in their own building very very strong team air Rob Dobson's going to have to come up hot if they're going to be successful and he's done that so far he has my lead 1-0 Dobson again didn't have to produce anything that time to wave them in front of him this is Hoffman good switch in play here Sean Barham chased back by Troy Newmeyer on the edge of the crease Shervin watches it carefully this is Vince Bow for air referee gets out of the way Simon Kirkham otherwise he would have taken a hit into the boards puck comes loose eventually now and still here's air pushing forward on the edge of the crease there was a Great opportunity for uh, David, uh, Dennis Purdy. Deluded the end of his stick. Still they get forward again. This is Sean Barham. Turned away. Manchester staying composed. Troy Newmeyer in possession. Hilton Ruggles. And Manchester. Short staff tonight. Showing spirit. This is Flinton has to flick it on into the neutral zone. Ruggles battles for it. It's one back for air by Montanari, number 10. Then it's Purdy knocks it into the corner. The chase is on here for Sam Grillo. But, uh, I think it'll produce an icing court. Take the action back down to the air zone. Well, ever since that first goal has been scored, Tony, it's been a little bit more quiet in the 9X arena. Well, the fans here are pretty enthusiastic. But uh, a little bit stunned, I think, by that early goal. I'll tell you, it would have been a different story, no doubt, had the storm been on the end of that first goal. But I'm sure there's plenty more to play for. There's still lots of life left in this game. Well, there's the attendance, or the average attendance. But uh, certainly this is a massive arena, the biggest indoor ice hockey arena in Europe. But it's air the visitors. This is Kevin Hoffman, though, but he can't clear it. Good work here by Sam Gallo. Gallo flips it around the balls. This is Dave Morrison for Manchester Storm. Good interception by Scott Young for air. Kevin Hoffman will chase it back now for Manchester. Off the boards, flipped into the neutral zone by Morrison. Manchester push forward. This is Woodcroft. Well, they get in each other's way very much there, and that uh, allows Catanaro, the air captain, to get back. And now they're moving forward with a purpose once again. Mark Montinari. This is Dave Morrison with a break for Manchester Storm. Big check, and that's uh, going to produce the first penalty call of the day from our referee, Simon Kirkham. We're going to get a tripping call, I think. Well, it looks like we got Angelo Catanero going off. Now he makes a big hit here on Davey Morrison, who tries to get the lateral movement going to these two defensemen. Look, he tries to pick them apart. Cat Norrell looks to get the old broadside, blindside hit, but he just catches them. And Simon Kirkham feels, well, that's a tripping call here. Cat Nero can afford to do that because there's nobody on his side driving into the zone. So they can afford to isolate Dave Morrison, who's really going into the offensive zone on his own. And that penalty gives a power play to the Manchester Storm, who've scored the most power play goals this season of any team. 61 power play goals they've got. And a power play success, 20.9%. Jago is the key to much of this. This is Rick Brabant. Brabant goes to the shot. Puck comes loose, and Dobson kills it stone dead yet again. We see a very solid game plan here happening by the Manchester Storm, though. And that is get that puck to the net and have guys driving for it. And let's hope... We can pick up some form of a rebound. So far, no avail because that man there, Rob Dobson, has been equal to the task, and he hangs on to those babies. Well, Air's penalty killing record is the best of all the clubs. And, uh, well, if they can produce the goods now, they'll remain in front, of course. And this is Dale Jago. Shotgun, they call him, for his ability from the blue line. Rick Brabant eases in around the balls. This is back with Brabant. Feeds Jago. Jago's shot is high, but the glove work from Dobson is again perfect. 
Well, not the shot that the Manchester Storm certainly wanted there. But they're looking to isolate the one side, try and create the two-on-one. Jago gets himself into a little bit of trouble here, lets the shot go, but it's way too high, I'm afraid. And when you get these high ones on the good goaltenders, Rob Dobson has no problems. That's just a routine glove save. Look at that good goaltenders, Bob. They don't come much better than that fellow, do they? No, they certainly don't. He's a big, strong guy. He covers a lot of that net, but he's got good, quick feet on him. I like that, most certainly. And the great thing about the fella is, is he very rarely goes down. He doesn't commit to these shooters. Power play with a man advantage to Manchester Storm. They're yeah, having to work hard on their penalty killing as they're pinned back in their zone. They, Matt Hoffman it is that clears it into the neutral zone. This is Mike Morin. We're going to get that face off taken outside that uh, air defensive zone and there's just uh, 70 seconds remaining on the power play. There's Alan Schuler. He played some hockey in, in Austria and uh, he comes from British Columbia in Canada, Tony. Uh, as we said before, his dad's got a ranch there and he breeds the horses and that sort of thing. And I know that a lot of the guys, I think, are going out there after the season's over and just going to have a good time, I guess, and try and relax and get rid of the bumps and bruises. Well, he's had a few of those. This is his second season with air, of course, Alan Schuler, An impressive player, and as you saw there, an ever-present this season. Missed a couple, few games last year. I think he had a jaw injury, didn't he? Had to wear a special helmet. That's, that's absolutely true. It was one of those funny-looking types of equipment, but it gets the job done, doesn't it? Hasn't needed that this year. Good season for Alan Schuler. Manchester pushing ball. This is Rick Brabant. Chris Miller knocks the puck in, takes the deflection away, and Dobson again kills it stone dead round behind the net. Party time once again here at the 9X Arena. A big party in a big place. You gotta like that hairdo as well, eh? Which are two, one, two, three daring colours. There we go. Manchester United shirt, the hair's not quite the same colour as Ron Giggs, is it? No, no that's right. Music these days, eh, Mr. Millard? Did you do that, Bob, when you were a kid? Power play still away. Of the Manchester Storm and a chance here. Oh, a brilliant save that was. Flinton had the goal at his mercy, and somehow Dobson almost a conjuring trick. Well, on this particular occasion, once again, Storm throwing that puck to the net. Let's see what happens. Bit of a rebound. Not the greatest angle, but again, Dobson big solid in that net there if you're gonna score on him you got to be quicker than him and you got to go upstairs a little bit face off is still in that air zone with uh, 30 seconds now remaining on the power play break is on here though and Matt Hoffman battling there with uh, Dennis Purdy slapped down the oh and Sherman had to be alert from that into the longest range goal of the season that one Break is on, still on the power play. Manchester with the man advantage, but air effective for penalty killing at the moment. Knocked into the corner by Barham, takes a hit from behind and doesn't like it. Back on the ice below us comes the air. Captain Angelo Catalaro and air have further improved their already impressive penalty killing record. And there's their record, 87.9 it's gone up to now in terms of success. Far and away, the best among the eight Super League teams. Dave Morrison in possession, the Manchester captain. Chases on the far side for Woodcock as he's taken into the boards there. Quite hard by Mark Wolf. Troy Newmeyer, number 44 for Manchester now. Uh, Jago is helping him out, but good ball checking here by Sandra Lowe for now. Jablonski. Lolonsi has a trainer. This is Woodcroft. Looking for space, and there is some on the far side as Newmar goes for goal. Kicked away again by Dobson under pressure, and certainly Manchester having the most shots, but Air have the goal that counts. And we're going to get a penalty call here, the second one of the game for slashing from our referee, Simon Kirkham. And uh, this time we're going to get a power play for Air Scottish Eagles. It will be Troy Newmar, I think, that's been called to the box. Yeah, Troy, me, Troy Newmar going off the ice on a slashing call. I don't know if we can pick it up on the play here. Nonetheless, the same old sort of tactics for the Manchester Storm. Drive to the net for that puck.
All kinds of action. There's Newmeyer over there. I think he just had a little bit of a crack along the barrier against Scotty Young. And the eagle eyes of Simon Kirkham finds that one and gives the Air Scottish Eagles the power play. Face off then is just outside the air defensive zone. And Air also has an impressive power play success record. Manchester's penalty killing is second only to Air. This is Vince Bow in possession of Air. It's a change in passes there with Sean Barr. Play is switched here. This is Scott Young who comes forward for the Scottish Eagles. Air remembering the darker strip playing towards the goal to our left. Scott Young switches play. Vince Bow is on this side. It will come back again surely to Scott Young on the blue line. Cooper can't clear it. Possession here now is with uh, number seven, John Parco. Air will take their time. Manchester with that familiar box defence, of course, with just four players. Dave Morrison has the break for Manchester Storm. But Air getting back very, very quickly. None quicker than Vince Bow. And this man, Sean Barham. Storm forward here from Scott Young. Jamie Steer is now in possession. He's got Vince Bow behind him. Bow will feed Scott Young. Young goes for Jones. Goal! Scott Young has grabbed his 18th goal of the season. Scott Young has hit home his fourth power play goal of the season to make it 2 0 to air. All on a one timer, too. You see the puck going around the perimeter here. But I'll tell you, it's just a brilliant shot there that eludes Grant Sherman in the net. Scotty Young, we all know he's a good offensive defenseman, but it's the quickness of release here. Just that breaks the old goose egg, and unfortunately for the Manchester Storm, they find themselves down two goals. Well, they lost Troy Newmeyer, of course, there, Bob, on that penalty call, and they paid the penalty literally. They certainly did, you know, the, the thing about it is, though, is it was that quick shot, and when you move the puck as well as they're doing, that doesn't allow the players out there to settle down and get into their position as best they possibly could, including the goalkeeper, and of course, Shervin, the puck going to the wide side of the net there, difficult puck to make a save on. Well, you've got to look at this air side and give them credit for the way they've achieved things this season. At the moment, uh, well, Manchester has certainly got a tough job on here to get back into this semi-final. Well, they've got a depleted staff, but as you say, Tony, you've got to give the Air Scottish Eagles credit. I mean, let's face it, these guys have got to be mentally tired. They've won three out of four competitions this season. They still keep on coming. The thing about it is, it's not a, so much a physical thing now. Everybody's in good shape. Sure, playoffs are tough, but you've got to be mentally prepared. Not only are those guys mentally prepared, but they're fit, they're well, and they're confident. There's their record this season, and that's pretty impressive because, uh, well, just 12 defeats in uh, 67 games. Here in this uh, playoff, well, this is the second match of the best of three series. Remember, they won the leg up at air by five goals to three. They're on top 2 0 here. If they win this tonight, they're through to next week's final. Well, you know, we talk about winning the league, we talk about a whole host of other things, but really, when it comes down to it, Tony, it's the playoffs that count. Everybody kind of jeers up for it. It's a different style of hockey. I'll tell you, when you're a playoff champion, you're a true champion because you've got to go through the rigors of getting there. Well, with the clock counting down on the period now, what Manchester will do for a goal boost their confidence as they go to the dressing room. But they're playing in a confident mood. They've got a lot to do. But now, there's a chance in the state there. Biet gets the opportunity, but uh, leading into the neutral zone well there by Chris Miller. Dave Morrison can't control the puck when he needs to. This is Angelo Catanara, the air captain. Kevin Hoffman is 25 with the cover for Manchester Storm. Good interception here now, and a chance here. Good work by Davidson Pierre. But uh, Chris Miller with the interception there. They knock it into the neutral zone and beyond. Angelo Catanara, just over the red line, goes for the long range shot and punched away there by Ron Shervin. Wilton Ruggles will get the break here. Ruggles lost, loses his stick and gets very annoyed with that because I think he thought he was the victim of the slashing there. 
the puck comes loose and we're into the final seconds of the period and there goes the hooter and air will be far more happy of the two sides as they come to the end of the period leading by two goals to nil they went in front through a deflected shot from ryan camus which appeared to go in off caribbean skate a power play goal from scott young his fourth power play goal of the season provided a second and air lead by two goals to nil There's live football coming up tomorrow on Sky Sports 3, live from the Riverside Stadium, Middlesbrough versus Norwich. Middlesbrough already through to the Coca-Cola Cup final, of course, on Sunday week. They're going to be looking to continue their push for promotion to the Premier League with a big result against Norwich. That's live football tomorrow, midday, on Sky Sports 3. Right now, though, it's playoff ice hockey. It's the semi-finals. It's game two, a best-of-three series. The Manchester Storm taking on the Air Scottish Eagles here at the 9X Arena. And Manchester really dominant in the first half of that first period, but the scoreline doesn't show it. The Air Scottish Eagles two goals up, but you can see there that Manchester have outshot the Air Scottish Eagles, which is no surprise. 12 on 9, Manchester have got it all to do in the second period. Well, Brad Rubichuk of the Manchester Storm is talking to Nick Rothwell. Brad, you guys were all over those uh, air, air in the first couple of minutes. Oh, yeah, we wanted to come out and we wanted to take the play to them right, right off the start. I mean, the last thing we wanted to do was you know sit back and see what they're going to bring to us we just went out we you know took the play to them we wanted to get the puck throw it at the net all the time and every time we get it and Dobson uh, you know he's been standing on his head and you know hopefully we can break him here in the second period I know you guys are short staffed but excuses aren't going to count if you guys lose this game no uh, that's uh, we've been short staffed all year and we haven't you know once used that as an excuse uh, we've got 14 guys dressed tonight and we're going to battle hard and with the 14 guys and hopefully we get a win we're at home got a big crowd behind us and we're just going to keep plugging away and like I said hopefully we'll you know get one past Dobson and hopefully open things up. Is that what it is hard work and commitment going to get you back into this game? Oh definitely I mean you know Air's been playing great all year and, and they're not going to you know they're not going to shut it off now I mean they're one win away from getting to the finals and you know unfortunately we're two wins and you know we want to go up to Air tomorrow and play the third and deciding game because anything can happen in a one game you know series so that's you know mandatory that we come out in the second period and just take the play to them like we have. Has this series hockey really uh, elevated everyone's play? Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, we we knew that Air was the team to beat, and <clears throat> excuse me. And whether we had them in the final or or in the semifinals, we knew that if we wanted to win a trophy this year, Air was the team to beat. And you know, unfortunately, it'd been nice to play them one game in the final, but we got them best two out of three, and you know, that's the team that we have to beat, and we have to go out and prove that we can beat them. Thanks a lot, Brad. Thank you very much. Brad Rubichuk of the Manchester Storm with everything to do the Storm in the second period. And Jim, really not the start they wanted at all. That very, very shattering for their confidence, I imagine. Yeah, actually, uh, I mean, I think the start was really good for Manchester. I, I thought they carried the play up until... We could see that with shots on goal as well, couldn't yeah, we? Yeah, there's, there, there's no question they carried the play. And I think it was it was their game up until Air got that lucky goal off that face-off. And it did change the complexion of the game. Well, the goal, the first goal for Air was indeed against the run of play. And you can perhaps settle this for us here. It's been attributed to Kumo, but did it actually go off Biet, do you think? Uh, well, that's what we're just trying to have a look for. But the main idea here is the puck gets back to the D-man, and he's just trying to uh, get the puck to the net. And there, if you look, it, it looked as though it did go off his left skate there and just changed direction, obviously. Uh, Sherwin kind of lost Whatever the side case, of it. it was yeah. uh, obviously good timing for Air. 1 0 up for them. Rob Dobson really keeping them in the game at the other end, wasn't he? Having a fantastic game. This just just one of many great saves he He's made. He's been really consistent all year long, and it, Manchester's on the power play here, and they're just trying to get the puck to the net with bodies. And Flinton has a chance to backhand it, but Dobson's right there, puts his leg out, and he covers with his gloves and makes an outstanding save. Manchester, uh, obviously it, disappointed not to take advantage of that yeah, power play. Yeah, the game could be different right now. That was I mean, their chance to get back that's in. That's right. Scott Young, of course, did take advantage of a power play for the Air Scottish Eagles. He made it 2-0 for the Eagles. We were saying before, weren't we, what a lethal shot he's got. Uh, great shot. And it was just, a, a, to me, a perfect pass from both. Nice, uh, soft touch. And uh, one time shot, uh, picked the far corner, and here you've got a 2 nothing for air. Well, we'll come back to this game in just a moment. The other game taking place is, of course, between the Sheffield Steelers and the Cardiff Devils, their second game of three series. Anthony Beers there, how's it going? Well, Steelers are 1 0 down coming into tonight, and that means that they know this is one clash with the Cardiff Devils that Sheffield simply have to win. And with 20 minutes gone, they're in deep, deep trouble, trailing the Devils by one goal to two. 
Dion Del Monte hit a high shot to give Steelers a 12th minute need, but Devils, however, grabbed a late equaliser when Doug McEwen pounced on a slack piece of Sheffield defence just 22 seconds from the break, and then more woe for Sheffield with just two seconds left on the period. Steve Thornton firing home a power play goal. And with 20 minutes gone, Sheffields are staring down the barrel of a gun. It's the Sheffield Steelers 1, Cardiff Devils 2. Well, if it stays the way it is, of course, we've got a repeat of the Benson Hedges Cup final. Well, the Air Scottish Eagles have dominated everything before them this season. They're on course now for a Grand Slam. Who would have bet before the season started that a small team from the west coast of Scotland would have done just what the Air Scottish Eagles have done? What makes them tip? Nick Rothwell's been up north to find out. The success Air is having is even more incredible when you consider the strength of the other teams in the Super League. They've lifted the Benson and Hedges Cup, the Express Cup, and the league title. But no one from the Eagles will tell you that it's taken them by surprise. The fact that we got our first one on the first competition, the Benson and Hedges, it gave us a lot of confidence to, to go on to the others. The Eagles have been virtually injury-free all season, and outstanding performances by netminders Rob Dobson and Colin Cavilla have kept their defenses watertight. Up front, take your pick. All the forward lines have produced the goods. A team without stars? Well, I mean, we say no stars, but we've got lots. We've got like Dobson, and like, he's one of the best goaltenders in the league. Mark Montaneri was like right out there with Tony Annan scoring all year long. And, we had like Wolfie and uh, Jamie Steers leading the Super League in goals. So, I mean, when we see no star, I don't think it's really true because like everybody had such a great successful year. The team spirit is the driving force behind their outstanding season. This team gets along better than any other team I've played on. And I think that's helped a lot this year. Get on, we get along well on the ice and off the ice and uh, that really goes a long way. The man who brought the team together, Coach Jim Lynch, believes the team should get on to do well. As best we can, we take a lot of time also finding out what these guys are like off the ice. Rather than, you know, there's some great players around, but they could be cancer in the dressing room. And uh, we take a lot of time, first of all, we try and get a good player, and then we investigate what he's like socially and off the ice. And if we sense any problem that he might bring to the team, we're not interested. And the guys in there, it's the classic family dressing room. There's, there's not one player in there that doesn't get along. And, Together with assistant coach Milan Fagala and captain Angelo Catanero, Lynch has built a squad arguably the best ever to play British League hockey. There are days where I have to do things off the ice and I'm not on the training, and uh, so Milan does the, most of the days he really takes over, and uh, we've been together for five or six years now, and it's, we just understand how, what each other wants. We both look for the same thing in players, and uh, we discuss all the training with Angelo before we go on the ice, and if I can't be there or if Milan can't be there Angelo takes it so it's a combination of the, uh, the three of us rotating around and it's a little fresher for the players to see a different face doing it every once in a while. The first day that I met Jim I think we, we sort of hit it off and uh, I think on the outside we're, we're quite different uh, whereas well, maybe I'm more an extrovert than he isn't but I think on the inside uh, you know our values are pretty much the same. Well yeah well he's <laughs> Angelo's got an Italian temper you know and I, I tend to fall asleep more than get mad so uh, it, it's a good mix. It, it's a good mix, and uh, he, he can get me pumped up a little bit, and I can. I, I think it's me calming him down more than the other way around. Grand Slam or not, the happiest man in the Super League has to be their owner, Bill Barr. It must be a compliment to Jim Lynch and Lyon Fagala and all the Bikeman staff and the players who have done an absolutely magnificent job. We never dreamt that uh, we would be where we are at the end of our second season. Well, Jim, as a contemporary, you have to admire what they've achieved. And what it seems that Air and indeed Jim Lynch have done is select players not just on aptitude, but on attitude. And it really gels, doesn't it? Well, if you look at their lineup, they've got a lot of talent, but they're, they're not really considered to have any superstars. And, and that's a big part of their success. Like Jim said, you know, they're like a family. They support each other on and off the ice. They've got a lot of character, um, and, and that goes a long way. You know, these guys are going to battle for each other. And, well, uh, they've showed they've, they've had a lot of success this year. Success breeds success. The Grand Slam is not out of the question. After that first period, it's definitely not out of the question. They look like they're on course for another final and perhaps another trophy. Is that good for the game, for them to make a clean sweep, do you think? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, obviously, they feel it's good for the game because they, they want it. And, you know, they've been consistent all year long, and you, it's hard to take it away from them because they have been playing well. You know, they've been working hard. And when you are consistent and they've been earning it, it's hard to take it away. At the same time, you know, for the game, it would, maybe it would be good to see some other teams in there winning. But uh, we will.
Thanks very much, Jim. We, we hope you do, because Ayers domination surely can't go on forever. It is in this game, though, their first period, two goals up after the first period. Their fans there, young and old. She probably wasn't even born at the beginning of the season, and she's going to perhaps see her team lift four trophies. This is the goal that made it 2-0 to the Eagles. Scott Young getting this one on the power play. A brilliant shot. It's been a great game. Join us after the break. There's a double header of live basketball coming up tomorrow afternoon in a special All-Star Sunday. First up, the Sheffield Sharks take on top of the table Birmingham Bullets. That's followed by the North versus the South All-Stars match, featuring the league's top 24 players. So a great afternoon of basketball live from the Sheffield Arena from 4 o'clock on Sky Sports 1. Right now, though, it's semi-finals time in the playoffs. It's game two in the best of three series. The Manchester Storm taking on the Air Scottish Eagles here at the 9X Arena. It's face-off time for the second period, so let's join Bob Carroll and Tony Millard. Well, there are the visitors leading by two goals to nil. If it stays like this, of course, they'll be through two straight games in this best of three series and through to that final. Goals coming from Ryan Camus and Scott Young on the power play. We're underway in this second period with Manchester Storm up against it and defending the goal to our right. They're wearing the lighter strip. Air, the visiting team, of course, in the darker strip. The green tops are now in possession as they whack it around the boards. Number 19 here down below us is Dennis Purdy. Flicked into the neutral zone. Manchester dump it back with Brad Rubachuk. The chase is on. I just wonder, Bob, whether Kurt Kleinendorst in the dressing rooms has uh, thought of a change in tactics or so. I wouldn't have thought so, Tony. Only from the point of view that... Let's face the facts, you know, Manchester definitely had the majority of the play in that period, although they find themselves down 2 nothing, They got the steam taken out of their sails a little bit, but they've got to keep the same thing up and just get back at it again. Cover here from Alan Schuler as Rubachuk knocks it into the corner. It's a break here. The city goes forward, Schuler. Good support, a chance at the edge of the crease there for goal number three. It is into the net. Air lead by three goals to nil. Sam Gallo getting that at close range. Sam Gallo grabbing his 31st goal of the season. And the Air Scottish Eagles lead 3-0. Well, I was kind of looking around to see who was supposed to pick up Sam Gallo, but he's left there. And he's wide open in front of the net. Good heads-up play. And, of course, the rebound once again is what does the damage. Huge play here, though, by Dennis Purdy to find his man, Grillo, wide open in front of the net. And, of course, too little, too late. And the Air Scottish Eagles are up three goals to nil. You see Grant Shervin commit there. He's down, so he really can't move anywhere else. Well, that goal just 59 seconds into the second period. And now a veritable mountain to climb for the team in possession now with Troy Newmeyer. That's the Manchester Storm, the home team. Catanaro in possession, the air captain. Good work, clear the danger behind his own net. Set his team away now. Good interception by Rick Brabant. This is Troy Newmeyer. Because he was in the penalty box when that second and vital goal came. Power play goal from Scott Young. Catanaro takes a rare excursion forward. It goes for the shot. Rebound cleared away by Troy Newmeyer. Back into the neutral zone. And that was a good piece of work by the big Manchester defence. Mark Montanari for the Scottish Eagles. Sam Gallo to his left. Scott Young gets it his way, and now Manchester can get the break here on the left. This is Jablonski. We've got a man advantage they have there, and the puck comes loose, and again, great cover. And Dobson comes up, grabbing it high in the air, almost basketball style. Well, a bit of a unique way to get that turnover in neutralized territory, but a collision. It just doesn't seem to flow freely for the Manchester Storm. Air come back in numbers, still some good defensive work. Jablonski looking for something there, but I'm afraid no way. Dobson too keen on that puck and too focused, I'm afraid. Well, there you see the scoreline, top left-hand side of the screen. And Air Scottish Eagles look at the moment to be marching on to the final with two straight wins in these championship playoffs. Remember, they won up and air in midweek, 5-3. Here tonight, lead 3-0. Face-off is deep in that air defensive zone. Referee Simon Kirkham comes across and says, come on, lads, let's get a bit of order about this. Gareth Hubbard, the linesman, drops the puck now. Chance for Manchester here. Miller with the shot. Deflection away in front of Dobson there. Blocked well, in fact, there by uh, Alan Schuler, it was. 
Marco can't clear the danger. This is Stephen Cooper with the shot. Deflection and again Dobson comes up with the big one. You know what a job this guy has done here again tonight. As I said, they stood on his head, but you know, there's all kinds of guys driving to the net here, Tony. He's not seeing those pucks so very well. Hesitation by Stephen Cooper only to make sure he's got guys in front of Dobson. Again, he's down, he plugs that puck up. Great save. Well, we heard that interview with Brad Rubachuk, and uh, certainly the Manchester players believe that Thompson's doing this standing on his head. Well, he's been the right way up most of the game and come up with the big ones. But still, Manchester push forward. And again, they can't hold the puck up, and Rubachuk's draw will move the draw, but we got an icing call here. And uh, that surprised me somewhat because I thought it came off Brad Rubachuk's stick. Well, straight off the draw, most certainly, and uh, there is some controversy down there, nonetheless. Looks like we're going to get a face-off deep in air territory. Well, it looks as if it was Rubachuk with the stick who drew it back and uh, didn't find his own man, and uh, I think uh, the referee, Simon Kirkham, well, Ron Camus looks as if he's been in the walls, doesn't he? That's what happens, Tony, and you take the old bang on the nose. Is there on the break again. Good interception this time, and now Mike Morin, number 15 for Manchester. Again, great defensive work from Alan Schuler to clear it into the neutral zone. Cooper fires it back into the corner. Camus will chase it, charging in his Brad Rubichuk. Into the neutral zone, and the break is on with Carry Biet. Chance here for Wolf. Wolf, could it be number four? It is! Mark Wolf it is, gets goal number four for Air. His 27th of the season. The Scottish Eagles are flying high at 4 0. Well, once again, the Manchester Storm get caught up because it's a two on one. Mark Wolf in alone on Grant Sherbin. Makes the little fake there. Let's have a look at it. This is a good goaltender. He lets him make the move. Unfortunately, it just by him on the far side. Huge goal for the Air Scottish Eagles. It's this one. Out of the zone now. While well, they say it's a team of no stars, four separate goal scorers tonight, four separate goals. And now the Scottish Eagles are in command. Into the neutral zone. This is Kevin Hoffman for Manchester Storm. The bank can't control the puck. Remember at the end of the first period, Cardiff leading 2 1 at Sheffield. The saves like that, they'd be through two straight and they'd be playing against air if it stays like this in the final and that as you heard Gabby say early on will be a repeat of that Benson Hedges Cup final but who knows Joe Middlestat wins it here Dale Jager will wrap it around the boards that will produce an icing call and take us right up the other end of the ring into the Manchester zone and that's not the way they're going to get back in this game well, the Air Scottish Eagle fans that have come down all the way from Scotland, I'll tell you, they've got to be happy with the results so far in this game. Well, they'll have a nice, nice journey home, I think, won't they? You've got to admire eh, some support that they've accumulated, you know, over a short span of time. They're always sold out up there, and, uh, you know, they're really behind their team, no doubt about it. Look at the coloured hair there. Face off deep in the Manchester defensive side. Linesman Lee Young will drop the puck. Draw one is by Manchester. They need it. This is Stephen Cooper. Leaves it for Woodcroft. Cooper again. Fires it left. For Newmeyer now getting into his opponent's half of the ring. Again, the cover is there. This is Dave Morris who gets it back. Cooper just keeps it in, but Rallo gets the break here. He's got support on both sides and behind. Wolf is the trailer, can't get the shot away, and now Manchester could get the break here. Jablonski, Woodcroft on the right, injury away to our right, somebody's up against the board with a head injury. The official stopping play promptly there, and suffering somewhat is Mark Wolf. And Sam Below going over to play doctor. Well, I don't know if he's went into the barrier there head first, he's getting up again though, but... It looks like he may be okay. Here comes the trainer to try and give him some form of medical assistance. Well, they're watching from all angles here. 
right close by everybody at home can see it as well and that's how the cameraman sees it and that's how the big screen sees it well that's technology for you nowadays but more importantly we've got Mark Wolf up now so that would be a detrimental loss to the Air Scottish Eagles lineup had he been out he scored a lot of big goals for them including one here this evening Turning captain for the Air Scottish Eagles. And uh, their captain, the Catanaro, plays such a big role both on and off the ice. Face off now, deep in the air defensive zone, and what Manchester wouldn't do for a goal. Well, you know, they need to break that goose egg. I mean, I'm just looking at shots on goal, and uh, Manchester were really strong as this game initiated, but it certainly turned the other direction now, and momentum has definitely changed. Puck deflected high up into the uh, sky. There's what Bob was talking about. 14 shots for Manchester, 13 for Air. But remember, Air has scored four goals, and that's what really counts, not the shots. It's the goals that count. Well, certainly so. I remember one time it was 6-0 up until Air got one or two shots. But as you say, it's putting it in behind that goal line that counts. Air being pushed back. Manchester with Dave Morrison. This is Scott Young. Already scored a power play goal tonight. Clears it into the neutral zone. The puck goes out into the timekeeper's bench, and that will produce a face-off just halfway inside the Air Scottish Eagles defensive zone. Air leading by four goals to nil. Scott Young there has got one of them. He does. He's got that playoff beard going there, Tony. We see it once again this season, and uh, he's one of these lucky guys, I guess. You know, it grows evenly all over the place, but they were kind of giving Big Troy Newmeyer a hard time before the game started on his playoff beard. I know Jeff Thomason, he started one. He said he did when he was 12 years old as well. Now that's why he's got to shave every day. Shot goes in from Stephen Cooper. Another good save by Rob Dobson. Still Manchester now pushing with Jablonski. Almost effective pass. His own goalkeeper this time by Angela Catamaro. This is Davidson Pierre for air. Catamaro, the captain now, clears his own defensive zone. Moves play forward. That's John Parko knocking it around the boards. Stephen Cooper covers for Manchester and gets it out into the neutral zone. But Catanaro, the hope of the ice is back there. Chance for Jamie Steer. This is David Sinclair. Great defensive cover by Newmeyer. Deprives Sinclair of his stick and takes the puck away. But that spare stick holds up the puck. Jablonski can't control it. Scott Young can. Chance here for Sinclair. Hustle off the puck. And now Jablonski's got the break and we've got a three on two. The quick bank on the far side. This is Morrison with the shot just on target. Chris Miller getting forward for Manchester. And caution to the winds a little bit. This is Rick Brabant. Hilton Ruggles comes out of the ice. Knocked down by Jamie Steer. Steer clears it into the neutral zone for air. This is Kevin Hoffman for Manchester. Rubachuk. Rubachuk shot. Rebound cleared away by Jamie Steer. Second attempt. Chris Miller from Manchester. High scoring defenseman. Backing his partner, Mikhail Vicklander, tonight. Vicklander serving a two match suspension. They're missing his talent. This is Craig Woodcock from Manchester. Shot just off target. Robson, Bob Dobson making sure. This is Ruggles. Again, Dobson. Equal to that. Well. What has Manchester got to do to get away with this? They're 4-0 down. They're one match down in the series at the moment. Well, they were the last team to score five to beat air. They need to do just that here tonight. Well, they're certainly capable of doing that, Tony. They've got lots of offensive punch in their lineup. But, you know, that lineup, as we said, is so depleted. There's that much room on that bench there that uh, you and I and Rothwell and everybody else around here could probably go down and get a comfortable seat. And uh, that's difficult. It makes it very, very hard for these guys. And physically, at this stage of the season, you got to remember that Manchester have been to Europe. They started the season probably earlier than any other team. And boy, it's taken its toll on them. Well, Bob, you mentioned you and Nick Rothwell. You were down there on your skates before the game. And I think that uh, Darren Lipsy, the Manchester assistant coach, almost offered you a game. Well, he did there, but he chickened out later on. But unfortunately, I got the bad back, so he had his chance there. Old Julia Trevor there 
the gal that does the physio work for the Manchester Storm. She's trying to help me out, so hopefully we'll be ready for that press game coming up this summer. This is the Scottish Eagles on the break. Here, number 10 is Mark Montanari. Harry Viet gets forward. He has support here from Borba. Coming forward is Ron Pamu. He knocks it around the boards. Viet's on this far side. It's helped away by Grant Shervin. Again, the interception. This is Montanari. Chance on the far side for Borba. Chance to do Pamu with the shot. Viet gets forward. And Air get back there. Forcing themselves forward. Manchester having the defending depth. This is Woodcroft. He can't clear the zone. Shot goes in again, and this time Shervin tracks it neatly between his pads. I've got to say, you know, the Air Scottish Eagles, once that puck gets into the zone, I mean, we mentioned their quick forwards, and I'll tell you, you can see just hunger all over these guys because, boy, they move the puck, they drive to the net, and I'll tell you, they're very difficult to stop. But this is a good play here. Shervin's allowed to come out and just concentrate on that puck. But I'll tell you, that's a real recipe for disaster when you let these guys get going in the zone. Grant Shervin, another one of these goalkeepers, big fella. You can see it's six foot one, 12, stone 12. He covers a lot of net, Tony. Well, since uh, Jim Rivnack departed, Grant Shervin's had the throne to himself. Chris Miller, forced to defend. Sean Barham holding the puck up well and trying to create more chances for the rampant Scottish Eagles. This is Chris Miller. Take a big hit there, Eric Flinton. This is Rick Brabant. Calmly uses his experience to set Manchester going. And Stephen Cooper now to get forward. And Cooper goes through. We've got a tripping penalty here now. As Cooper's brought down. And that'll be power play Manchester Storm. And they need it. Well, this man advantage. I'm not sure what's going to happen yet. Who's got the call? It looks like Vince Bowie here, Stephen Cooper trying to split the seam. There you see the slash by Vince Boa on Cooper. Let's have a good look at it. There you go, boy. You want to go through here. You got to get through the Easton as well. And he caught Cooper pretty well. Cooper not happy with that, I'm sure. The slash and call. Boy, he's in a little bit of pain. Nonetheless, because there's a gap there between the glove and when your elbow pad starts. So. I'm not actually sure it was Vince Bowe's stick that took him down in the end, but uh, there's still a man short regardless. Be a little ice on the old arm of Stephen Cooper tonight. Boy, those are a sore one, no doubt. Face-off is just outside that air defensive zone. Remember, Manchester with the power play now. They do have an impressive power play record. They've scored more power play goals this season than any other club. So has more opportunities. Woodcroft. This is Kevin Hoffman. They will play it around. They are organized at the back now. A chance here now. Shot goes in from Jago just wide. This is Dave Morrison. Vince Bow again in the thick of it there as Jablonski takes the tumble. Kevin Hoffman feeds Woodcroft on this side. Hoffman will go for the shot. Deflection. Bodies fly everywhere, and now the breaks on for the Scottish Eagles. Could they grab a short-handed goal here? They've got a three-on-two situation. Chance here for the trailer. Shot goes in. Brilliant save by Sherman. Dives to his right, pulls it back under his body. I'll tell you, boy, can these guys move this puck? No question about it. Manchester perhaps on the power play, but they got three of their forwards caught deep on this, which allows the Scottish Eagles to go down three-on-two. That keeps Sherman moving into the nets there. And he has to come up with a pretty crucial save for him, otherwise it's 5-0 on a shorthanded goal. Well, uh, certainly Manchester already conceded seven shorthanded goals this season. That was nearly number eight. This is Scott Young for Air. So they hardly notice uh, when Air shorthanded these days. They, the four men out there make up for five in some cases. Grant Shervin a bit unhappy. He felt that he had a little more time than that. Simon Kirkham blowing the whistle, nullifying the play. There's Scott Young. Bit of a routine save by Shervin. He's wanting to make that play go. You can see him giving the puck to Rick Brevent, but at that stage, the play had been nullified. The whistle blown. Still there. Well, they try and keep the puck in there. It uh, took a deflection off the stick of Jamie Steer. Just a bit off the ice circle. Bring a face off back in, still inside that Manchester. 
defensive zone. Remember, Manchester on the power play with Vince Poe there in the penalty box at the moment. Well, we just saw Jamie Steer. Now, this guy, you know, he's one of these products of the Canadian national team program as well. And, you know, when you're seeing youngsters come up and players develop the game, one of the things that's very, very difficult to teach him is that natural movement. That's one of the things that Jamie Steer has. Chance there with this man, Jamie Steer again. Taken into the balls by Stephen Cooper. Rick Brabant tries to get possession. He's robbed by 21, Carrie Bier. Still, they're working well, despite being shorthanded here. Bier goes in. Well, that's a very strong forecheck. You see two guys in, forechecking by the Air Scottish Eagles, and they're killing a penalty. That, to me, indicates an awful lot of confidence. Morin looks for the trader. Interception from Scott Young. Sherman watches it carefully. And Stephen Cooper. Scott Young knocks the puck down. Looks for support to his left from Sean Barr. And passes his way out of the reach there. And Link got counting down. And uh, well, Manchester hardly had the chance to attack Rob Dobson's goal. Could they do it now? Here's Chris Miller. Rubachuk. Rubachuk will go for the shot, charge down again. Good, courageous stop there, this time by uh, Angelo Catalara on the far side. Yeah, on the power play, despite being short-handed, outshot Manchester 2-1. Another air goes, shot goes in, hard away by Grant Sherwin. This is Dennis Purdy for the Scottish Eagles, trying to find a man in front of the net. Comes out towards... Uh, well, it goes, it goes into the net in the end. Well, all over the place now. Air lead by five goals to nil. I think Sean Barra got the final touch, but we have to see that on the replay. It was bouncing around everywhere. Air lead, five nil. Well, that's a sweet goal for Sean Byram, but again, it's those quick forwards. And the coverage here by the Manchester Storm. Ah, uh, it's a bit suspect. Obviously, because guys haven't got men picked up. And when you get those Air Scottish Eagle forwards moving around, boy, you've got to make sure you got your man. Sean Byram left alone in front of the net there. We'll have a good look at it, and all he's got to do is put it into the empty net. Well, certainly the Air Scottish Eagles once again are on song here tonight. None more so than that man, Scott, Sean Byram, has played such a big part. If you remember, of course, he was with Manchester last season. I'm sure, back in familiar territory, and pleased to be on the right end of a 5 0 scoreline. For a new mile for Manchester Storm in possession. Crowd in this giant 9X arena, fairly quiet now. Clinton gets forward. Bow tries to clear the danger. Into the neutral zone. This is Troy Newmeyer for Manchester. This is Joey Middlestat. Wax it around the boards. But, uh, Manchester will keep this in with Jago, but he can't get a clear shot from point. Morrison knocks it down. But, uh, still, Morrison has to work hard there, and uh, well, certainly the puck held up there. And he will take the action, I think, outside their defensive zone. I don't, know whether, I don't know whether the uh, official here just lost. Well, that's a high stick. One of the guys down there, maybe he felt that there was an injury, in fact. Dave Morrison fighting for that loose puck in the zone there. Well, referee Simon Kirkham. I think it's for that high stick that he felt it's safe to stop play. And it will restart with a face-off just inside of their defensive zone. Rick Brabant will try and win the draw for Manchester Storm. But tonight, so far, they haven't been winning it clearly to allow shots to the defenceman getting forward. There again, danger snuffed out. Scott Young on this side. Now they move forward with a purpose. This is David St. Pierre. Dumped into the corner. The chase is on for Jamie Steer. A support from Parco. Cleared into the neutral zone and up the ice by Kevin Hoffman for Manchester. Scott Young stops it before it goes over the goal line. Good interception by Dave Morrison. Scott Young helps out. This is Chris Miller for Manchester. Oh. 
still Manchester pushing forward, but they desperately need to do something here. Shot goes in for Morrison. Dobson blocks it well. Rebound to Rabat. Backhand can't get a clear shot. Angelo Catanaro comes away. Interception from David St. Pierre. St. Pierre, could he go all the way? Checks back. Got support here from, from Scott Young on the blue line. Switches play to John Parco. Puck seems attracted to his air sticks like a magnet. Sticks may be wooden and the puck plastic. Metaphorical term. Puck flicked up the ice, giving both teams a chance to change. Oh, a little tumble there and uh, <laughs> Angelo Catanaro. Ice hockey getting closer to his golf ability there flicked into the neutral zone and now chased back here by Troy Newmeyer for Manchester just over halfway through the game and the Air Scottish Eagles set for a place in the championship playoff final remember they won it here in midweek they lead here 5-0 which would mean they go through two straight games dumped into the corner the chase is on again here Air yeah, defending in depth as they have done all night Harry Viet forces it around the boards good interception here this is Mark Montinari Chance here, getting forward there, and we're going to get a penalty call here because uh, Dino Borbrick was has brought down, gives us a chance to seek the views of Jim Fearchuk on high. Jim, is there any way back now for Manchester Storm? Uh, it's going to be pretty tough, there's no question. You can see that Air has really stepped up their level of play, and it really showed, especially when they were killing off that penalty. They had control of the puck most of the time, and they were really putting a lot of pressure on Manchester. And, uh, you know, it's taken a lot of fire away from them, and there's a awful huge hill to climb now for the Storm. Well, it's even higher because the calls for interference on Dale Jago down below us here. And that will give Nair another power play and put Manchester under pressure. Well, the step there, as you said, by Baba, just getting ahead of Dale Jago. And, of course, Jago icing a lot tonight. He's going to be a bit tired out there. He's got to hang on to that guy because if he doesn't, it's a one-on-one -on -one with a goaltender. You call it. In possession, Stephen Cooper for Manchester. Another man who's had plenty of ice time tonight. Grant Shervin, the goaltender, beleaguered in the extreme tonight. This is Jamie Steer. Vince Bow is number six for the Scottish Eagles. Steer sells the dummy to take Dave Morrison wide. Scott Young uses his skate to control the puck before dumping it around the boards. The comeback now on the far side. This is Vince Bow. Sean Barham in possession, puck close to the Good defensive work there by uh, Dave uh, Troy Newmeyer. Oh, nearly goal number six there, and perhaps it should have been from Jamie Steer on the edge of the crease. Steer, though, gets it out to Scott Young. Young whacks it around the boards as they retain possession on the power play. This is John Parker. Scott Young, early power play goal, could he get another? Parker will go for the shot, takes a deflection off the left pad there, the goaltender, Shervin. I'm not sure he really knew where that was, but he had the angle right. Still the eager Scottish Eagles push forward. This is Sean Barham, chance for Parko, but the clearance allows Flinton to flick it out of his defensive zone, and Morrison will chase here with Bow. The air defenseman gets there first. Forward here and here now, out shooting Manchester for the first time this season. This is Hoffman. Half a minute counting on this power play. Scott Young gets forward. Amazing with the ratio of shots that uh, Manchester haven't scored there. We've got five. This is good work here by Sam Gallo. Maybe the smallest player on the air team. Certainly knows where the goal is. Oh, desperate defending there. Von Sherman has to dive across. Power play clock counts down. Could air be denied this time? Still below in possession. Back on the ice, but Grillo's going to get the shot goalwards, and Sherman has to watch that carefully. Grillo goes for another one. Three shots on target during that power play from the Scottish Eagles. Manchester dumped the puck up the ice. Rob Dobson watches it carefully again, keen to preserve his shutout opportunity. Already five this season. Montanari dumps it around the boards. This is Dennis Purdy, he helps it off. Just under four and a half minutes remaining on the second period, but they're leading 5-0. And now Manchester get the break. Four against two if they come all the way. They're rushing back. This is Mike Morin. 
Umaya will go for the shot, takes a deflection. Dobson watches it carefully, holds it down dead tight just in front of his own goal. That gives us a chance to look at the action so far. It was Ryan Camus with a shot for the blue line that took a deflection off the skate of Biet. Put air in front. Scott Young on the power play with Troy Newmeyer off the ice score. Goal number two. That's how it stayed at the end of the first period. The start of this period, Sam Grillo it was. The one on the mark, his 31st goal of the season. Put Air Scottish Eagles 3-0 in front. Mark Wolf made it four. Spreading the goaltender wide. Goal number five came from Sean Barham. It all started around the back of the net. Barham finished it clinically. Air lead, 5-0. Air defensive zone, number 21 there for Air yeah, Scottish Eagles, it's carried the air, clicks it sideways. Davis in pair, chases on for Biet here. Very good for more work from Purdy. Good stick handling from Purdy. This is Brad Rubich up on the break. Held down. Held back here. Rubichuk taken into the boards below us, but now no penalty call comes back to Hoffman. Chance here on the edge of the crease there for Woodcroft, and another fine save by Dobson. They've got the angle just right on that one. Manchester fans starting to get back into this. Break is on here. This is Hoffman, chance for goal, again Dobson does well there. Stalking forward. This is Ron Camus for Air. Knocks it into the neutral zone, and Air somewhat in command it seems here. And this is Carrie Biet. Just off target. Joe Middlestadt holds it up, but now the break is on, and this will surely produce the icing call here. Well, we've got the latest news from that other game at Sheffield. Sheffield won Cardiff four. Remember, Cardiff won the first leg. Two goals in 20 seconds from Doug McCarthy and Ivan Matulik seemingly have put Cardiff in command. With their leading 5-0 here, it'll be a repeat of the Benson Hedges Cup final here next week, which would then be air against Cardiff. Face-off is deep in the Manchester defensive zone. This is Miller on the break, just under two and a half minutes remaining in a period. Really has seen air take them on. Here they come again. Jim Lynch, it seems, Bob, giving some of his lesser lights a bit more ice time tonight. Well, he doesn't want to afford any injury, not that that means anything, but the point is, is that the success of the Air Scottish Eagles has relied very, very heavily on using all four lines. They get these guys all working together, they come out, they give it their all, and it's that pressure and hard work that has brought them a lot of success. And that's telling against the Manchester team that can't field three complete lines tonight. Those injuries, and suspensions, hitting. Chance here for Hilton Ruggles. Oh, yes, Ruggles has broken the shutdown. And Hilton Ruggles has scored the first goal of the night for the Manchester Storm. Well, Hilton Ruggles, or homie as he's called by his teammates, you get him around that net, boy, and I'll tell you, he's gonna do some damage. The puck's thought to be out of the zone here, I'm sure, by the Air Scottish Eagles. I'm afraid it didn't get there. And Hilton Ruggles, well, he's just good with the puck around the net. Takes his time, goes to the forehand, gets a bit of a deflection, and it finds the glove side of Rob Dobson to get the Manchester Storm on the scoreboard. Well, I just wonder, that man Hilton Ruggles has produced a goal, could we have a miracle here? Could the Manchester Storm get back in the game? It's just under two minutes remaining on this second period, and all, of course, of the final period to go. Ice hockey is a funny old game sometimes. This is David Sinclair. I'm sure that Jim Lynch, in the gap between periods, will keep his team battling on. So sure Kirk Kleinendorf will be urging his team now as they come forward to try and get back into the game. But now we get the break. We've got a three-on-two situation here. This is John Parker helping it into the attacking zone. He's got support. 
is Jamie Steer, holds the puck up against the boards. Good interception for Jablonski. Manchester's captain is Dave Morrison, wades in. Scott Young can't clear, or can't keep it in the zone. Stephen Cooper holds the puck up. Hopefully he comes loose here now, and Air will keep the pressure up here. For the final minute of the period, with Air leading by five goals to one. This is Angelo Catanaro. Yes, Scottish Eagles captain. Chris Miller for Manchester in the neutral zone. Feeds Jablonski. Jablonski will knock it forward, but Morin has gone in too quickly, and we got the offside call. Jeff Jablonski coming to the Manchester Storm. I believe he played in Roanoke in East Coast League last year, where he scored something like 56 goals, Tony. And this guy can score goals, there's no question about that. And he's been one of the key factors to the Storm and their side so far this season. He's a big, strong fella as well. He's six foot, he weighs almost 200 pounds, 14 stone. And 18 goals for his name this season. And the least penalized player, as you saw from that statistic, in the Manchester team. Newmeyer knocks it into the corner. Last half minute of the period. This is Sam Grillo in possession for air. Pushing forward is Alan Schuler. Good work here by the stick of Mark Wall. Nearly a chance for a great second goal there for Sam Grillo. They hit it over the top. This is Sam Brad Rubichuk. But he goes in ahead of the puck, and that produced the offside call with just over 10 seconds remaining on the period. And, uh, there as we know firmly in command, there's Brad Rubichuk. Brad well, Ruby, as he's called by his teammates, and, you know, he's an assistant captain there, and the combination of himself... Dave Morrison and Craig Woodcroft, well, they've done an awful lot for the storm side this year. There's the drums. They're a beaten, Tony. Well, they need some black magic, I think, to help them here tonight. A bit of voodoo or something, eh? This is Morin with the seconds counting down on the period. <laughs> the puck's left behind the goal. Air end the period, leading by five goals to one. A consolation goal for Manchester Storm came from Hilton Ruggles. Remember, Camu and Young had put air in front in the first period, but those second period goals from Sam Gallo, Mark Wolf, and Sean Barham have surely put air en route to next week's final. They lead by five goals to one. Another big night of boxing coming up next Saturday. Lennox Lewis against Shannon Briggs and Britain's Harold Graham against the American Charles Brewer. Just two of the four world title fights on this special Sky Box Office event. For further information, call 0990-800-888. That's 0990-800-888 for more information on a great night of world championship boxing. Right now, though, we're here at the 9X Arena in Manchester. It's game two of a three-game series in this playoff semi-finals. And the Manchester Storm really struggling after two periods. The Air Scottish Eagles took a stranglehold very early on in that second period. 5-1 they lead, and they've really evened things up, not surprisingly, in shots on goal, because Manchester were a little bit unlucky to be down in the first, but Air dominant in that second period. Well, a man talking to Nick Rothwell now, played here for Manchester last season. He's the scorer of Air's fifth goal tonight, though. Sean Byrams with Nick. Sean, how'd that goal feel? Well, you know, it felt good. It's always good to get a goal on the board. It was a pretty easy one. You know, Dennis and uh, Hoffy did most of the work. I just poked it in the open net. There was a time there you guys were down. You actually outshot them when you were uh, penalty killing. Yeah, we've uh, put some pressure on them. I think they're getting a little tired back there. They're really short-staffed right now, so that was one of our... Uh, you know, things we wanted to do coming into the game was pressure them hard and uh, hopefully tire them out. Now, I, I know they're f you, you guys are 5-1 up and everything, but this game isn't over yet. No, especially in their barn. They're explosive. They can skate. And if you don't play a good, tight defensive game, they can score in bunches. So we got to make sure we, we don't worry too much about uh, scoring goals and, and make sure we play good defensively. We don't need any more to, to win. Thanks a lot, Sean. No problem. Sean Byram talking to Nick Rothwell, not letting any excitement creep onto his face. The fact that they're just a period away, Jim, one would suspect, from being in the playoff final next week at the 9X. Yeah, they seem to be in uh, pretty good control of this game. And uh, it started early in the period, which really can take a lot of momentum away from the team. It goes inside it the first minute they scored. Very, very bad timing, wasn't it? Sam Grillo's goal, which uh, we can see now must be shattering for the confidence. Yeah, he was left wide open. Uh, Jago slid right over, and you can see he's wide open going to the net, gets a feed from Purdy. 
And because he's all alone, he gets a chance to bang at the rebound. Shervin doesn't get a chance to cover up and uh, puts it away, and, and that hurts. I have hurt. to say, as you pointed out, you can see he's, he's wide open. Very yeah. bad defensive. Yeah, it was just there. a costly mistake, especially early in the period. Well, Air, of course, then 3-0 up. And at that point, the game isn't all over. But when Mark Wolf gets four, one thinks that really Manchester, just their confidence low, not looking like they can string things together. It's funny. Manchester had some pressure just before this. And they break out and they get, you know, obviously they get on the break. And, and Wolf, he's scored a lot of goals this year. And give him a chance. That was a great move on his part. You know, caught Shervin standing still and put it away. And, you know, to make that 4 nothing, it's really uh, created a big hole for Manchester. Of course, it's Sean Byron, who we just heard from, who made it 5-0. And I know that Tony pointed this out as well, that each of the air goals coming from different players, highlighting the strength and depth that they've got. Yeah, and that's exactly it. They've got great balance in their lineup, and they've had, you know, good contribution from everybody. And, and that's the big thing. They are a team, and they don't rely on one or two guys. It's everybody that chips in, and, you know, it's uh, been a big part of their success so far well, this year. Air scoring in the first minute of the uh, second period was the thing that Manchester didn't want. What they do need and what they did get was Hilton Ruggles getting them a goal just before the break. This is great for Manchester. You know, they're still battling. It's late in the period, and, uh, you know, they're down five goals, and you can see uh, Ruggles takes a hard knock, but he's left open. He goes to the net. Puck comes there, and he just kind of turns around and bangs at it, and he gets a lucky bounce, but to me, it's a critical goal for Manchester. It's late in the period. gives them a little bit of momentum. they got a chance to get a breather now, so coming out in the third, they should have a little bit more spark or fire, and, you know, they're looking to get some goals, and as Sean said, they're very explosive offensively. They've got a lot of talent, and they can score in bunches. So, you know, you give them a chance, this game could change. We know we say in ice hockey that this can happen. A lot of goals can come in, and we've seen this already tonight in the other game that's gone on two goals in 27 seconds or whatever it was. But do you think, realistically, Manchester can get back? Well, Dobson is a great goaltender. Uh, Air is very solid defensively, and obviously that's going to be their key focus. But uh, I am rest assured Manchester's not going to quit. This is their home rink. You know, they, they want to please their crowd as well as themselves. And I'm sure they're going to come out firing and play pretty hard. Thanks for the moment, Jim. Back to you in a moment. Well, on Wednesday night, Cardiff got just the start they needed with victory over Sheffield at the Ice House. It was an incredible game by all accounts. Nick Rothwell takes us through the best of the action. The fans at the Devils Ice House were entertained to the hottest game of the season. Cardiff and Sheffield squared off for game one. And against the flow of traffic, ex-Devil Nicky Chin gave the traveling team the lead. Scott Allison gave Sheffield a two-goal cushion going into the intermission. He took a rebound and hit the twine over a sprawling Herlovsky. But Cardiff fired things up in the second after Ken Hodge got the Devils on the board. Kip Noble tied things up with this great shot. Noble gave the Devils the lead a few minutes later. Once again, a great shot. This one, however, taking a slight deflection to beat Hibbert. Mike Ware then showed the hands of a forward. He walked around the Devils' net to square it up at three. The seesaw battle continued. Mike McWilliams with a deflection off of a Kip Noble shot. The Steelers on a power play, and their go-to guy Ken Priestley fired home a low fastball to tie it at four. In the dying seconds, Tony Hand came within inches of clinching the win on the road. But this one was destined for OT. And only 1.29 into overtime, Ken Hodge executed this play to pull the curtains on a thrilling game. That was a tough place to get points. So you just don't walk in here and walk away with two. It was, it was tough. Uh, it's playoff hockey. I would like to finish it on Saturday. If, if not, then we go to the third game. And it's going to be a real pocket. It's going to be up to you know who wants it. Well, that was a close game. How's it going tonight in game two, which is, of course, being played in Sheffield? Let's find out now. Anthony Beer is there. Anthony. Well, it's not nearly so close tonight, Gabby. 2-1 down at the first break. The last thing Sheffield needed to do in the second period was to concede early. But that's precisely what they did. And believe it or not, they did it twice. Doug McCarthy and Ivan Matulik were the Devils who put Cardiff 4-1 up inside the 25-minute mark. Devils' pair of goals coming just 27 seconds apart. Steelers eventually got a reply in the 37th minute with a Ken Priestley power play effort. 
only for Matulik to make it 5 2 28 seconds later, suggesting that the Devils not only look comfortable, they're actually toying with their beleaguered opponents. 20 minutes to go, it's looking great for Cardiff, but bleak for Sheffield. Sheffield Steelers 2, Cardiff Devils 5. Thanks very much, Anthony. Well, Jim, it looks at the moment like we might be having a repeat of the Benson Hedges Cup final. Sheffield left it late last season, a bit too late this season, perhaps? Uh, yeah, it's t especially when you look at the teams they're playing against. Like, Cardiff has a really solid lineup, and, and I know we played against them in the playoffs, and they really stepped it up a level. They took their play up, and they really played intense, and, uh, I, like, I knew Sheffield would have their hands full. Um, makings of a great final, though, you know, obviously... Uh, More than a match for, for air, aren't they? Yeah, well, uh, Cardiff is obviously going to try and uh, even up the score after the loss in the B&H, so I think it's going to be uh, a great atmosphere. You know, I, it's, I think it's a great setup for a terrific final. We are, of course, assuming that scores say the same. We shouldn't write off anybody, should we, at the moment? Thanks for the moment, Jim. And what we know that they're playing for is, of course, a place in the final next week at the 9X Arena. And we gave you the opportunity to come to the 9X next week. We had a competition last week, and we asked you the question who was the top point scorer in Super League this season? The answer was Tony Hand. And we have to say congratulations to Ms. Rachel Murray of Birmingham and Mrs. Jane Hughes of Nottingham. And for that, they get a VIP package. They come to the 9X courtesy of us. Travel, accommodation, they're in for a great day of ice hockey. Well, right now here at the 9X, after two periods, the Air Scottish Eagles, dominant all season, have been dominant here so far, 5-1. These Manchester Storm fans aren't letting that get in the way of their enjoyment at the moment. Can their team make it back into the third period? Join us after the break. This goal made it 5-0. Will there be more? A reminder of the international football coming up against Switzerland next week on Tuesday night at 6.30 on Sky Sports 1. The under-21s are in action. And then over on Sky Sports 2, later on, it's the full international on Wednesday night from 6.30. Switzerland versus England, live from Bern. International football, Tuesday and Wednesday on Sky Sports. Right now, though, it's ice hockey. It's playoff time. Let's join the third period. Face-off is almost upon us. Bob Carroll and Tony Miller. With the Air Scottish Eagles leading by five goals to one, Manchester Storm have a mountain to climb. But if they can move forward early and perhaps get a quick goal, then who knows in this game of ice hockey. Just about anything could happen. But at the moment, Air with an organised defence with a much longer bench, Bob, the odds must be very much in their favour. Well, I follow your line of suit there, no question about it. I think in Manchester's defence, Tony, it was a goal late in the period. You know, that's going to give them some inspiration, but they're going to need a little bit of luck on their side, no doubt, to crawl back. Air, very, very strong and powerful. Well, we heard that conversation between Nick Rothwell and Sean Barham, and quite clearly, Air know what they have to do to snuff out any danger from the Manchester Storm, but the fans will get behind them. The Storm have the possession at the moment with Brad Rubichuk here in that air defensive zone. This is Rubichuk. Dobson so safe and sure of course conceded just that Hilton Ruggles goal well, that puck came just out of that uh, zone only just over the blue line Mike Boring couldn't keep it in and that will produce a face off just in the neutral zone well Mike Moran another one of the players that Kurt Klein and Doris has brought back this season and he's done a terrific job he's shuffling guys around Kurt Klein and Doris because He's obviously shot a short lineup, and it's guys like Mike Morin that really become valuable there because they're flexible enough and versatile to play a number of positions. Well, Kirk Klein and Dorst, who we saw there, back here coaching at Manchester next season. He's on a three-year contract, I understand, and this is the end of his first season. This is Dale Jago for Manchester. He's in his second season, of course, with the Storm. So in the Super League, he was here uh, with them earlier in the First Division in their first season, so he's been here all the time since hockey's been in this fabulous 9X arena. This is Dale Jago. Uh, middle stat with a shot, takes a deflection off the shin pads of Rick Brabant. Shot goes in again, Grant Shervin. And he watched that very carefully. And still, Manchester now will break. This is Troy Newmeyer. Puck cleared into the uh, Manchester bench. They will change their lines and the face-off will be in that Manchester defensive zone. There's Samuel Grillo and uh, this guy, he's not big in stature, a 5'8". 
But I'll tell you what, boys, he got some big goals for the Air Scottish Eagles, especially in the latter stages of this season. And he's just so quick out there. He goes 100 miles an hour, but he plays like a big man, and he certainly drives to the net very well. And an intriguing little uh, French-Canadian accent. But Jim Lynch there, getting his team very well organized in this final period to really close the door, I'm sure he's trying to do on Manchester Storm. But could they open it ajar here now? This is uh, Jablonski. He will go for the shot just wide of the left-hand post of the goaltender, Rob Dobson. And Parko tries to switch play. This is Dave Morrison, the Manchester captain. Spreads play left, interception with Scott Young. This is David St. Pierre, combining well here with Jamie Steer. Steer tries to go through the smooth defenseman. It's Chris Miller who spreads it right. Eventually cleared into the neutral zone before being whacked back by Angelo Catanaro. This is uh, Mike Morin with a chance for Manchester. It hits the pipe work there on the backhand. That was desperately close for Manchester. Almost getting back into the game. Could they do it? Well, that's a difficult shot to stop for any goalkeeper. You can see how much of a tricky shot it really is when these players go to the backhand. Newmar. This is Morin again, the man who had the opportunity. Morin again keeps battling. Spreads play. Well, the air defense close and then tight as Jago gets forward. Here is Morin. He will whack it around the balls. Craig Woodcock holds it up. Woodcock gets it out. Chance for Jago and Dobson. Well, feels that stone dead. That's the ball in front of him from Byron. Well, the game has been raised a level, no doubt about it by the Manchester Storm, and they're certainly playing for their playoff lives here. Jago not getting on the loose end of that puck. Again, Dobson having to cover up. We'll just have a look here. Let's see if we've got a two-line pass happening. Very, very close, but he certainly was inside that red line with his skates, which allows Morin to go in alone here. And boy, the pipe work saves the day for Rob Dobson. Rob explaining there that the position of the skates counts on the two-line pass, and, uh, well, it's a great chance. Hoffman with the shot, and again, Dobson had no space to see that at all and still saved it. That is a key play, isn't it, Tony? You see that. We've got a situation, I'll tell you what, this is interesting. Let's get back to that in a moment, though. There's the shot, but no rebound from Dobson. Flinton's looking for something, but nothing and no avail. With the face-off now in that air defensive zone, Manchester have pulled their goaltender to try and grab a goal and get the extra forward on, which they have at the moment. It's very seldom that happens this early in the game. Still just under 17 minutes of the final period to go, and the goal's still empty to our left. Air could shoot from anywhere here. Manchester have the puck. Clearly, they think they can still win the game. Before they were going to struggle now here if he gets the shot on target. Great interception there. Goaltender waiting to come back on, but uh, for now, Joey Middlestep will watch that. Is he aware the net is empty? Chance here. Chance here for Bart Wolf. A brilliant save by Grant Turban. And that has got to be the save of the year. What a brilliant save. The goal and Sherman flung himself as he came onto the ice and threw himself across the ice. It was brilliant. And there's another one. Well, that Bob Carroll alongside me takes just about the biscuit for goaltender's <laughs> saves. Well, i got to say this one. Kurt Kleinendorf, he's just throwing caution to the wind there, I'm afraid. he got nothing to lose. Here goes Woodcroft with the shot just off target. Rebound comes back. Montanari on the break for air. Well, if his gamble pulls off, that will be the turning point. This is Craig Woodcroft for Manchester. They literally now storm forward. Jablonski can't keep it in the attacking zone. This is Scott Young in possession. Air will stay calm as they come forward. This is Sam Grillo. Now the break's on here for Manchester. As air almost get caught with too many men on the ice here. Cooper with a shot, Dobson with another save as Young clears the danger. This is with Jago. Manchester now 
Well, they're trying everything to break down this air defence. This is some game at the moment. Morin. This is Morrison. This is the break on for Parco. Air coming forward now. This is Jamie Steer in possession for Air. I wonder if Manchester will try that technique again of removing the goaltender. Here goes the shot from Ron to move just off target. This is Dave Morrison with Air will get the break here. Probably get the puck. The shot goes in. Completely missed there by Kevin Hoffman, just like me on the golf course yesterday. Hoffman knocks it down in the neutral zone here now. Error changing on the fly. Manchester get the break. If they get the face off at that end again, they will probably again try that tactic of removing the goaltender. Hoffman chased back here. Puck held up now. This is Brad Rubachuk for Manchester. This is Brad Rubachuk. Rubachuk knocks it into the corner. Manchester will want to hold the puck up against the boards and try and get the face off. They'd rather have possession. Held up by the referee's skate, Simon Perkin, and cleared into the neutral zone now. Troy Newmeyer chases it back for Manchester. Clock continues to count down. This is Dale Jago in possession for the Manchester Storm. Flinton clears it into the neutral zone. Knocked back by Ron Camus. This is Ruggles. Takes a deflection off the skates of Camus there. This is Alan Schuler for air. Who lead by five goals to one. Just over 13 minutes remaining. Sean Farah is number 16. Looks to be hooked down by Rick Brabant. Sam Grillo wins it back for air to feed Ryan Camus. Good cover here by Flinton. Now Manchester get forward. Leave it for the trailer Ruggles. He's got Brabant on this side. Takes a deflection, the shot goes in from Hoffman, takes a deflection off the skates of his own man, Eric Flinton. Bob, they're struggling here, aren't they, without the breaks? Well, quick changes, and while the play's moving, both teams trying to utilize that, but it's very difficult, depending on where that puck is. Very tiring for the players, especially Manchester, being short staff. Brabant can't type it in when it matters, which is play left. Well, Manchester are giving their all at the moment. I wonder if they'll feel the effects with that short bench. Well, you know, this is the key, though. They've got to open it up. They need to score the goals, and that's the last thing that the Air Scottish Eagles really want to do. They want to play tight defensively. This is Chris Miller, fed by Stephen Cooper. Lucky deflection this time. Joey Middlestat with the clearance eventually, and up the ice it goes. And uh, we thought they'd produce the icing call, but they allow Manchester the break here now with Cooper. This is Morrison into the corner. This is Jago. Looks for the deflection again on the shot there. This is Jago. Scott Young blocks the shot, and now Air going to break here with four on three. This is John Parco. Switches play this side. Catanaro with the shot. Knocked down by Sherman. Jablonski comes away on the left, 51. The block of that producer face-off just outside the air defensive zone. Well, how about this guy? I'll tell you, Grant Sherman, we haven't seen too much like it. Certainly in my time here in Britain. But how about it? Because here's the shot. It's an empty net. I'm not sure if it's going wide or not, but there's Sherman. Headstrong, comes up with a glove save. In case you're looking at it twice, well. Well, we've got a timeout called, and we could go down ringside for thoughts on this with Nick Rothwell. Tony, that was a pretty interesting play, eh? Well, what it is all about is that Kurt's going to wait for when Manchester have definite possession down in the air zone. He's going to take Shervin off, get the attract extra attacker out there. But the big important thing is that as soon as air looks like they're going to get possession or get possession, is to get Shervin back in between the pipes. And you could say that they, they left it a little bit late on that last play. I think Kurt Klein and Dawson will think he timed it just right. <laughs> Here's another chance to have a good look at it. There's Mark Wolf. He puts everything into that. Sherman comes in there, boy, like a bombshell. 
And of course, he makes the big save, but notably here, Rick Brebent tried to ice that puck at one stage after the puck got out of the air defensive zone, Manchester's offensive territory. He couldn't ice it, and of course, they got caught out with Grant Sherman sitting on the bench. I think we'll remember that save for many, many a year, Bob. Face off, just in the neutral zone, just outside the air defensive zone. Air in possession, though, this is Ryan Kabo. Since we saw those adventures, I don't think we've had a face-off up in the uh, air zone, which is what Manchester want to try and repeat the tactics, as Nick was outlining just then. This is Craig Woodcock. Moring. Moring gets the shot away again. Dobson picking plums for him. A good job here by Craig Woodcroft to gain the offensive zone of the Manchester Storm. The problem, I suppose, is, is that nobody's driving for the net. Good defensive work there by the Air Scottish Eagles because they're not allowing any sort of clean slate to go in and try and obstruct Dobson's concentration on the puck. Looking to our left, there's an empty net as Grant Sherman has disappeared to the bench. And exactly the tactic as Nick was outlining with the face-off deep in the air defensive zone. They have six out skaters. Gamble time once more, Bob. Well, there's nothing else for it. The thing about I have to say is that it's so important here that the Manchester Storm get that face off. We saw it happen in the first period. Nonetheless, they've got nothing to lose here. They've got to put out all stops. They've got to think offense. Well, the record this season is five empty net goals to one gained in this way, our statistician tells us. Let's see if they can break that down. Shot goes in just off target. Held up against the boards. Ron Sherman it is that has to wait to get nipping back onto the ice at the slightest thing, and here's a chance again now. Break is on here, but it's slapped back into that zone by Troy Newmar. I want the goalie back because there's got possession. But, uh, it's going to be iced, and the goaltender will take a trip once again. Well, Jim Fairchuck is up with us, the Bracknell Bees coach. Jim, is this something you would do? Uh, Funny ass, Tony, last year in the playoffs, uh, we did this against Sheffield, and we had a penalty call against us, so I'm uh, a little confused right now, wondering what's going on, because I've been uh, given one interpretation of the rule, and uh, now this is happening tonight. Uh, my belief is, as far as the rule says, this should be allowed. The, the interpretation of the referee on the night was different, and that's why we were assessed a penalty. But uh, I think this adds a lot more excitement to the game, and I'd like to see this rule stay. But tactically, though, can it pay off? Uh, yes, I believe it can. Well, there's Jim Fairchuck putting his head on the block, and Manchester doing exactly the same with six out skaters. And can they pull this back? Puck held dead. Manchester fans don't like that because it was effectively lying on the puck there by uh, Mark Montanari. Well, if you can't win that draw, Tony, certainly try and keep that puck out of trouble. Because the last thing that he wants is that puck going back to the defenseman to get the shot on goal. Ideally, the play for the Manchester Storm. Ten and a half minutes remaining. Again, the puck. They're held up by Mark Montanari. On a face-off. On a face-off, you've got to make sure you pick your men up. And this is one good thing about... The Air Scottish Eagles, everybody's got somebody there. If you're going to get that puck, you've got somebody on you, and you're not going to get that good, clear shot that you effectively need. If you're going to win the draw, you've got to win it clean. Miller looking for the shot. Denied space again, but flips it inside. Good work by Rick Brabant. Chance here for Sam Gallo to go for the empty net. Angelo Catanaro gets forward. Eventually the puck goes out into the neutral zone. And Nick Rothwell is down ringside alongside the Storm bench with news of these tactics. Yeah, guys, I've just been checking it out why Manchester can actually do this. And apparently there's just been a change in the IIHF rules that if you took the goalie off during a, a break of play, you could only replace him during a break of play. But now they've changed the rules so that you can take him off during a break of play and put him back on anytime. Well, the brains of Kirk Clydendorf there working, and Nick Rothwell interpreting the new regulations of the IHF, and Manchester trying to use it to good effect. And now, when they get the break here, this is Rick Brabant. Miller, shot! Dobson with the save, and uh, Kevin Hoffman getting forward, and uh, really 
Rob Dobson beaten just by Hilton Ruggles so far tonight. He's been very, very impressive once again, Bob. That's right. Chris Miller, he's that offensive defenseman that gets the play going here. Drive to the net, fellas. Go after that puck. That's been the motto of the Manchester Storm. But in order for that to work very effectively, you've got to have rebounds, and Rob Dobson has not allowed many of those here tonight. Well, there's a shot position. Air 32, Manchester 30, with a 5-1 margin. And away to our left, once again, they've removed that man, Grant Sherman. Six out skaters occupying the zone, the air defensive zone. And going for Gamble, going for Broke. The Manchester fans are certainly getting behind their team. But now it's a chance of an empty net goal here, and it's John Parko in possession. He will go for goal. John Parko has scored on the empty net. Air have scored their six. John Parko, his 15th of the season, and now Air leads 6-1. Well, it all works well as soon as the coverage is lost, and this is what happens because it allows the Air Scottish Eagles to break out of the zone here. Parko's got an option. He's got number nine with him, which is Jamie Steer, and he doesn't even have to use that option. He just lets the shot go, and of course that hits the empty net. Well, there's uh, John Parker's statistics, and certainly the tactics of Kurt Klein and Dorse. We always knew it was a gamble. It might have paid off, and all credit to him for trying it. And now, yeah, leading 6-1. There goes a shot, Grant Sherman happy to save that. Still Manchester will try, this is Jablonski. Firing it into the corner. Angelo Catanaro, wax it around the boards, Borba keeps it in. Keeps it down, this is Carrie Viet trying to get the break behind his own net. Helped on by Scott Young. Number eight is Mark Wolf, he'll turn it captain. Borba controls the puck well under pressure. Wolf again gets forward. Into the corner, but the goaltender, Grant Sherman, will try and set his team going and does. This is Angelo Catanaro chasing back for air. Knocked into the neutral zone, into the corner, and that uh, is watched carefully by Chris Miller now in possession. Manchester still battling. Craig Woodcroft loses his stick, has to play it in with his skates. Sean Parham now, he controls the puck under pressure. Morin robs him. Neutralised turnover there, and now it's going to be chased into the corner by Brad Rubichuk. Catanaro clears it around the boards and eventually knocked out. Off the rink, in fact, by Matt Hoffman. The latest score from Sheffield at the moment. It's uh, Sheffield Steelers 2, Cardiff Devils 5 in the third period. And with it... Air Scottish Eagles leading 6-1 against Manchester Storm here. If it stays like this, it would be an Air Cardiff final here next Saturday. A repeat of the Benson and Hedges final. It'll be Scotland against Wales. Well, and what an interesting matchup that would be. I mean, uh, Jimmy Fearchuk mentioned it. The fact that the Cardiff Devils have turned it up a notch. And once again, the all-powerful Air Scottish Eagles. They are high and flying that mighty way. So it's going to be a very, very interesting final, should it result to that. Well, if the score at Sheffield stays this way, Cardiff will be unbeaten in their eight games in the playoffs so far, and that means they'll come to the final, and the Red Devils will be hot. This is Manchester Storm, though, in possession of pushing forward. They're not done yet, they're battling. This is Woodcock, held up against the boards this time by Alan Shuler. Mike Boring goes in to collect the loose puck. Ryan Camus, who scored the first goal of the night, clearing the puck up the ice and producing the icing call. And I wonder if this time we're going to get the goaltender off as we get the face off in the air defensive zone. Or have the gamble finished? Well, you try it once, and uh, as soon as it backfires on you, I think that's a chance when you, you maybe say, well, that's enough of that, because you don't want it to be a, a big open race there, but Kirk Klein endorsed him, and he's going to try all sorts of things. He's a very creative coach. He's been around the game an awful long time, and, uh, you know, he's put together a very inspirational side here in Manchester this season, 
And he certainly climbed the ladder in terms of league terms, and there will be a team to be reckoned with in the future. Well, even if they don't get out of this, Bob, they'll be back here next week because we have a third and fourth place match, and if it stays as the scores are tonight, that third and fourth place match will be here next Saturday afternoon between Manchester and Sheffield. It'll be quite a game. Can't see Flinton with a shot. Another brilliant save from Rob Dobson. Cleared into the neutral zone. This is it at Sam Grillo. He's beaten to that. The puck is knocked into the corner by Troy Newmyer. It's a busy game for Manchester. All of them have. Here's Grillo again. He's got a man on the far side. Grillo goes for the pass and gets the shot. Gets a goal! Sam Grillo, second goal of the game. Fine into passing there. Quick movement. The finish was clinical to Grillo. Well, Grillo again making a huge play here, but it's the quickness, and once these Air Scottish Eagle forwards move forward, look out. But what a heads-up move by Mark Wolf to get that puck to Grillo because the coverage is left there. No one picks Grillo up, and he's just in alone, and he just has to shoot that puck into an empty net. So he creates it, but he also finishes it off. Well, Manchester's worth domestic, but a chance here going forward for Cooper, and another great save by Thompson. Shot goes in from Miller just off target. Manchester won Air 7 here tonight. That equals their worst domestic defeat of the season. 7-1 against Cardiff earlier in the season. And we're going to get nice and call. Cool. We'll take the action back into that Manchester zone. And certainly, Kleinendorf's men have battled in this period, uh, Bob, but, uh, well, yeah, have had another hot night. Well, Angelo Catanero got a bit of a smile on his face, and he's a very strong character in this Air Scottish Eagle lineup. I've noticed one thing he's doing tonight very well, and he's standing guys up before they come into the zone, and he's allowed to do that because he knows that his forwards are coming back and they're picking their men up. So there's no options in terms of the pass, and of course, he can just concentrate on the puck carrier and make the big hit. Angelo Catanero knocks it around the board. Shervin watches it carefully. This is Chris Miller. Hooper tries to get them going. This is Dave Morrison. Play is switched here. Fans are still cheering. Morrison again. Feigns the slap shot. Looks for the deflection. Good defensive cover by that tougher Scott Young. John Parker. Which is played. This is Mark Wolf. Sherman has to watch that carefully. Parker retains possession. Jamie Steer tries to avoid his man Kevin Hoffman. But Hoffman picks him up with his stick. And eventually Manchester, well they still can't clear that zone, they do now. As Catanaro tries to control it for air. He combines well with this Scott Young getting forward. Parker's on the far side. Young is taken into the boards with Parker in a great position and he got the pass across the crease there. Here comes Manchester Storm. Just under six minutes to go. He's Morin. This is Dale Jago for Manchester Storm. Both teams changing on the fly. Troy Newmeyer gets forward. Dumped into the corner. Knocked around the boards. As Manchester try and exert some pressure despite being 7-1 down. Puck comes loose. Battling qualities for Brad Rubichuk. He's not done. And now Air get it back here, and this is a good break here for Mark Montanari. This is Newmeyer. High stick call, produce a face off. Troy Newmeyer, what a tremendous job he's done in the playoffs for the Manchester Storm. I and mean, we saw him just a few weeks ago down in Cardiff, and boy, that guy was solid out there. He was my man of the match. He's very steadily defensively, and that's one of the reasons why he doesn't score an awful lot of goals. But he's big and strong, takes the body absolutely super in front of the net, and he's like a goaltender's dream in terms of defensive work. Still that puck deep in that Manchester zone as Air pushed forward. This one cleared up. Break is on here. Ruggles can't get possession, but uh, Rick Brabant does. Troy Newmar forces it forward. This is Joey Middlestaff, one number 44 to another. This is Dale Jago chasing back. Sherman watches it across his line. 
holds his arm up saying that should be icing and the officials agree and that'll produce a face-off down the end of Rob Dobson the air goaltender Dale Jago he's logged a lot of ice time and we've seen his offensive numbers and we saw him at the latter stages of the season and just goes to show you exactly how tremendous a slap shot this guy possesses and how they use him offensively especially on a power play but tonight they have managed to deny him too many opportunities Bob I think they've closed him down fairly quickly they have you know they don't allow him to shoot they realize that and of course with Vic Lander out he's the other guy with a big shot for the Manchester Storm you know it just cuts those options down ever so little yeah perhaps they missed Mikhail Vic Lander more than they thought Puck disappears up into the gallery and uh, that will produce a face off just outside that air zone. With so over four and a half minutes remaining, and they're leading by seven goals to one. Remember, they played in the Benson Hedges final and won it. They won the Super League, they won the Express Cup. Could they complete the clean sweep of winning the Super League Championship playoffs next week here at this 9X Arena? Hoffman with the shot. Dobson for a change doesn't take it cleanly, certainly blocks the effort. This is Chris Miller, number 77. Last little break with Chris Miller. Clinton on this side, good interception, good stick handling here by Sean Barham. Barham takes the return pass and keeps going forward. Crowded out by three defensemen here and Brabant gets back to set Manchester going. Spreads play, good interchange of passes with Ruggles. Still Brabant, got man on the edge of the crease, chance here for Ruggles, and Ruggles probably should have had his second goal of the game there. Still it bounces loose and it's almost over the line, that was desperately close, and Dobson eventually picked it up with his left hand just before it crept over. Well, I'll tell you what, you'd wonder if there's just a bit of plexiglass right across the front of that net, because boy, the saves that have been coming out of Rob Dobson have absolutely been tremendous. Again, lots of pressure by the Storm here, as Brabant throws that puck to the net. Look at that. Two Manchester Storm. Ruggles gets two cracks at it. Dobson just gets those big pads in front of it. Makes the save. Not over yet. Flinton has another go. Right on the goal line, but not in, boys. I'll tell you, when you're hot, you're hot, aren't you, Tony? Everything you can do to keep that puck out of the net. Well, earlier we heard uh, Brad Rubachuk suggesting that Rob Dobson had stood on his head. He did it literally that time. Chance there, and Manchester still coming. This is Stephen Cooper. Trainer with a shot is Morrison just off target. Cooper again. Dale Jago gets forward. Jago's shot is blocked again by Thompson, who's happy to see the rebound go wide. This is Sam Grillo. Two goals to his name tonight. There, yeah, stay calm. Play switch to Grillo on this side. This is Sam Grillo, the smallest player in the game. Shot goes in there from Mark Wolfe. But he got one goal himself tonight. Newmeyer tries to set uh, Manchester Storm going. They do now with Dale Jago. Jago goes for the slap shot. Takes a deflection off Catalaro's stick and taken down by Rob Dobson to feed this man Scott Young. This is Chris Miller. Under three minutes remaining. Yeah, now looking safe and sure, and perhaps they could have another one yet. This is Brad Rubachuk for Manchester, trying to salvage something. Chris Miller in support is number 77. This is Hoffman. Hoffman's got support to his left now. Shot goes in for Woodcroft just by. They get another break here. Borba times his skate to perfection and Shervin clears it. Disappears into the uh, Manchester bench. With just over two minutes remaining. Air leading by seven goals to one. Need a real miracle. Manchester to do anything here. No, it's been a long season for the Manchester Storm, and I think that they've given it everything that they can. You know, they've had some good shots here tonight, and had they gone in, it certainly would have been a different story. But I'm, I'm sorry, the playoffs are all about hot goaltending, and when you run up against a guy like Dobson in the Arnets, he's hard to beat when he's on fire. This time, the goaltender that's under pressure could be Grant Shervin yet again. With a face-off deep in the Manchester defensive zone as we move towards the final two minutes of this game. 
Shot goes in from Borba, takes a deflection off the skates of Jago towards the corner. Two minutes remaining in the final period. Manchester still trying. This is Prevant. Prevant slaps it goalwards, knocked away up to the crowd by goalkeeper Rob Dobson. Rick Brabant recently chosen for the Great Britain side and uh, since coming over from Newcastle, boy, he's done a real good job. He's a good hard worker and I know that Kirk Kleinendorf feels that he was a real prime pick and certainly helped this side when he got him in the latter stages of the season. One minute and 52 seconds remaining. Rick Brabant is trying to win the draw for Manchester. If we get another goal now, that would be consolation to the fans here in this 9X arena who are still standing up and applauding as their team season comes to an end. It's been good fun for them up here. And in the end, a no trophy. Sean Barham is number 16 against his old club. And he'll be satisfied with this tonight. This is Rick Brabant, spreads play to Clinton. Clinton has Ruggles to his left. Clinton's going all the way, but Dobson, with his knees, is effective. And then even saves the rebound exactly the same way. Now the break is on here. Sean Barron has time on his side. Looks for support. And then on the far side from Purdy. Purdy comes over this way in support. Gets back to Cavanaro. His pass runs as straight as Ruggles. Ruggles has the break on. Stephen Cooper's on this side. Cooper with the backhand misses completely. Catanaro comes forward, the air captain. Glorious season for he and his team. Barham knocks it into the corner and takes a deserved rest. Cooper holds it up well under pressure from Alan Schuler. Scott Young takes a tumble. Jablonski goes to goal! Goes into Dave Morrison in the end, I think, on the final touch. Jablonski from behind the net. Dave Morrison, the Manchester captain, provided the finishing touch. Well, these guys, they've worked so hard all game. You know, it's nice to see that they get a bit of a lucky break here on some good hard work. Jablonski from behind the net. But this time, it eludes Dobson. Loose puck in front of the net. You've got to make sure you try and get that guy stick. Unfortunately, Dave Morrison gets a handle on it. And that goes in to give the Manchester Storm their second goal here tonight. Move into the final half minute of the game. That goal some consolation for the Manchester captain and his team. And the Air Scottish Eagles march on. It's Alan Shula. This is Sam Grillo. Big check from Scott Young. Not only knocks his man sideways but wins the puck. Final 10 seconds of the game as Air march on towards the championship final. They'll be back here a week today. The Air Scottish Eagles. Clock counts down and the final whistle goes. Both teams come onto the ice. A really sporting game of ice hockey. In the end, Air coming out worthy winners, but Manchester played their part. Bob Crawl alongside me. For the moment, Air got their first goal. They looked in command. They did, you know. They, they've got goals at crucial times, and I suppose when you're a team that possesses a lot of success, the Air Scottish Eagles, that's important to do. But really, Air Scottish Eagles and their supporters know that this season at the moment belongs to them. And one more trophy now there is just 60 minutes of ice hockey away from them. And that's going to be an interesting one. You know, it's been a very, very, very good season in terms of the Super League. And I personally feel that, you know, if Air can do this, absolutely tremendous. Well, that gives us a chance to look at the goals that have been taken the crowd here, over 6,000 of them, they've enjoyed much of it, most of them come in the way of air. Ron Camus, with a defective shot it was, that put the Air Scottish Eagles in front. They had in a second through Scott Young on the power play to lead 2-0 at the end of the first period. Sam Grillo scored a third to make it 3-0, and give Manchester Storm a mountain to climb. That early in the second period. Mark Wolf made it four, just three minutes later. The Manchester Storm knew that they were up against it. Sean Byram against his former team netted a valuable goal to make it 5-0 and Air were in command. Hilton Ruggles pulled back what at the time looked a consolation goal at close range to destroy Rob Dobson's shutout. 
John Parker stormed forward to net an empty net goal as Manchester Storm gambled. But Sam Grillo grabbed his second of the game from close range to make it 7-1. A consolation goal from captain Dave Morrison made it 7-2. And Air leading by or winning by seven goals to two go through to the final. And their coach Jim Lynch is with our reporter Nick Rothwell. Jim, another, another comprehensive win. Yeah, uh, a little bit surprised, but uh, I, I know Manchester had a few of their key players missing. Uh, I think I noticed they were sort of doubling up their centermen, and we just figured if we got a chance of winning this game, we have to really work hard down low in their end. And I got to give our credits, our forwards credit, from the, maybe the 10-minute mark on of the first and the whole of the second. We just, I think we literally just drained their defensemen down low and created a lot of chances. The start of the first period, you guys were out shot. Uh, Rob Dobson really came up big again. Well, you expect that. You know, Manchester's fighting for their lives. They're in their rink, and the finals in this rink, I'm sure they wanted to play here, and uh, we, we expected that. We just hoped to weather the storm in the first 10 minutes, and it worked out that way. So, Grand Slam, is it on? Well, I hope so. Uh, as you're saying now, it looks odds on this card up, a repeat of the bench and edges final, and they're playing really strong right now. I, I anticipate almost a repeat sort of scoreline, a repeat type of game. Thanks a lot, Jim. Thanks, Nick. Cheers. Well, they say winning's contagious. It certainly seems the Air Scottish Eagles have caught that disease. It's not a bad one to have, is it, Jim? No, not at all. I, I mean, they're, they are playing with a lot of confidence. Uh, they believe they can win, and, and they, I mean, they came in here, and you could see they, they did a great job. Just quickly, we talked about it during the game, that the tactics used by Kirk Hine endorsed, leaving that net empty, and John Parker took advantage of it for the Air Scottish Eagles, of course. Yeah. It's, it's funny how uh, you could see here the defenseman really didn't jump into the play quick enough to get that loose puck. Otherwise, yeah. they might have kept the puck in the play, or, you know, in, in their zone. Puck turned over. He comes down. He shows good patience with the puck. Defenseman's out, and then he just lays it into the net. Um, you know, it could have turned the table if uh, Manchester would have got a goal on a play like that. Uh, who knows what would have happened. Indeed, desperate times at that point for Kirk Klein and Dorse. Let's see how he feels now. He's talking to Nick. Kurt, would you maybe say that things would have been a little bit different if you guys had a full roster? Well, I, I like to think they would have been, but I mean, Air is a very good hockey club, and they've had a great year. I think we would have given them a better run. I don't know if the results would have been any different. I like to think they would have been. It was uh, quite a comprehensive victory. They just were so solid tonight. Yeah, we came out early, and uh, I thought our first period was very good. In fact, I thought we carried the play, but we ended up on the bad end of a 2 to nothing score. And then they came out in the second, and they capitalized on a couple of breakdowns. And when you're down on this club 4 to nothing, it's tough to come back. Thanks a lot, Kurt. Good luck you with everything. Thanks. So the season's over for Kurt Klein and Dawson. It's Manchester Storm, where they have got to play for third and fourth place. But really, that's it now, isn't it? It was do or die. Can Air win the Grand Slam, Jim? Well, I think we're up for one great game. I mean, Air wants to get that Grand Slam. On the other side, Cardiff wants a little bit of silverware. It's, in a sense, payback time for the B&H final. So I think we're up for a, a real storm of a game. Thanks very much for joining us here, Jim. Well, let's confirm the results from the evening. It's a latest score, indeed, at Sheffield, where they're down by six Cardiff goals to two. Air, of course, winners here, 7-2 over Manchester. It's looked like it's going to be an Air-Cardiff final here at the 9X next week. And that's where we're going to be at the 9X Arena, Sky Sports 3, 7 o'clock next Saturday. And if it indeed is Aaron Cardiff, it's going to be an absolutely fantastic final. Cardiff want revenge for that Benson Hedges Cup final. Will they get it? Join us next week. It's been a good night.